It's Friday, August 11th, 2023. Ozone Nightmare is one place you can go to support the show, or you can go to the show homepage, and you will find to your right, as you are viewing your screen, an array of rounded edge squares, vertically arranged, top to bottom. Several pictures will be found within these squares. One looks like a very short book with a bookmark on it. Clicking that will take you over to Lando's Amazon author page. You'll see one with a PayPal logo that lets you donate through PayPal if you prefer that to Patreon, which I, there, I, it is now impossible to navigate, just as a side tangent. I saw somebody talking about Etsy and saying they don't want to use that anymore because apparently there's something going on with Etsy now. It's like, man, yeah, eventually all these services well, end up alienating segments of their populace. I, wait, you, mean, you mean like as a, as a way to sell? Your, yeah, your that they don't they don't yeah. want to buy anything from there and they don't want to sell anything through there. I I don't, I've never have, so I don't know what they're talking about. But there's something. I have bought stuff. I have I've bought quite a few things through Etsy. Uh, so um, have I, I, but apparently and there's gen- a thing. G- I've generally had good luck. Oh, I've had I've gotten yeah. I have there was a person I bought uh, frames to put my magic cards in, and they are custom made for magic cards. They are perfect, oh, excellent frames. But like I said, almost all these platforms eventually they end up getting greedy and they end up alienating their fan base. So. Like with Patreon, PayPal gives you a different option if you want to go through there. I'm sure PayPal has its problems too, but I can't set up 15 different payment things, so that's it. Yeah. I wouldn't mail us your money. It's a bad idea. So PayPal, Patreon, those are the two <laughs> primary methods. I, I, I could set up, if anybody wants it, I can set up one of those buy me a coffee or Ko-Fi things because those are free and easy. But nobody has really brought that up, so I'm not going to bother unless it's an actual necessity. You also see a skull icon that will take you to my link tree where it has all my art stuff, threadless, whatever, everything on there. I'm going to be putting some more shirts on there because I've I finished the glaive. So the glaive's going to go on there. I think we're going to put like anti beast mode on that one because that's funny and it's a pun. What's which one's anti beast mode? I think that's going to be the glaive because oh, okay. the villain of Krull was called the beast. So I'll put the yeah. glaive and it'll say anti beast mode because people have beast mode shirts because, you know, it's a workout thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll put anti beast mode because you know I'm an asshole. So and I and I and I'll probably have two versions. Um, it'll have with the blades and without because I like it better without. But I know a lot of people like it with the blades out. So I'll probably put two versions of the shirt. Um, do you do you have a glaive? I have come so close to buying a really good one. There's a guy who makes them, and at some point I will probably. Here's what I'm doing. I think I told you this, or no, I told my wife this. I'm not selling any more of my magic cards for the rest of this year because okay. otherwise we're going to get hammered on taxes because, the, you know, I have to claim all that. Yeah. So I'm ne- so I'm building a stockpile for next year. I've been just doing ones, doing ones, doing ones, but not selling them, just putting them into a book. Got but it. people have already said we want to buy these. And I'm like, not yet. I'll wait till next year and then I'll start selling again. So once I make a bunch of money from those, then I'm buying a glaive. So I'm, I'm trying to be very disciplined in, okay, if it's literally money that's out of nowhere, then I can buy a glaive and this will be so, money out of nowhere. So did I, did I tell you on the show about the dream with my wife, the Godzilla dream? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, so, 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 okay. So yeah, I had a dream a while back about my wife turning into Godzilla 
uh, and it was Godzilla wearing a purple hat, and then my wife uh, basically destroying part of the eastern seaboard, right? It's become a joke now between my wife. And but speaking of like weird crap, um, my wife bought me the Godzilla bust. The, the not they call it life size, which is really weird, but it's basically human size. <laughs> it could not if Godzilla was human size, what's that? Yeah, of course, it can't be life size. It'd be bigger than your exactly. House. But they call it life size. Very strange. Um, but it's like a human scale bust. So it's one you know uh, one yeah. to one scale for humans. Did you get it a purple yeah. hat yet? No, I have to buy it a purple uh, hat. But yeah. my wife is like, she's like, I didn't know if you'd want this, and I was like, No, man. I was like, That's awesome. I was like, We'll put the purple hat on it. I was like, It'll be in my office, and it'll be my dream wife. And my wife started laughing. Because she's like, you know, that means something else, right? I'm like, I know what it means. I was like, but you became Godzilla. I was like, so like, I've got this weird, strange connection to Godzilla now because sure. it's like, it's my wife's Hulk form in my head. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a purple hat out on it, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be great. It lights up. It's got the blue. Uh, fins on it and everything i just gotta find the right hat my wife goes you're not allowed to take mine i'm like that's fine we'll go find another one but uh yes i i you and i often talk about the whole things that you want that you probably shouldn't buy yes and i never sure. i never would have bought this but my wife yeah, yeah. was like eh, it's been a tough couple of months and she wanted to be nice you know uh and, and it's for my birthday which isn't for like you know another two months at this point so she wanted to be nice but yeah it's uh i love stuff like that but yeah it, it's the whole when when do you when's it okay to blow that kind of money <laughs> well yeah like i said that's that's something like that i'll wait till i can sell some of these cards because i'm I, i'll have enough from those yeah because i i have to have 20 by now so yeah that'll that'll bring a good chunk of money in what do you what do you regret not buying even though it was too expensive and you shouldn't have spent the money what do you regret from these, like, you know, models, uh, you know, remakes of, of objects, things like well, that. Well, I got regret? lucky because the ones that I regretted, I actually was able to get, which was the Akira bike and figure. So, honestly, the only other thing, okay, was there any, was there something that I could have gotten and didn't at the time? Let me think about this. Because most of the stuff I ended up getting. Uh, so, is there something I regret not getting? I mean, the only other one was I had the chance to get a really good... Uh, Blade Runner gun for cheap. Oh, I, yeah, I think I remember And I that, missed the yeah. window on it. Yeah, and, and so now to get one of those, you're going to have to pay something like six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800 for one yeah, that was as good with metal because this was a metal one with LEDs working and a sliding yeah, bolt yeah. and the whole thing. Um, And that, you know, there was like a window of a week where I could have got, but that, I mean, that was a long time ago too where I, I didn't have the money, honestly. So no, and that's what it is. It's normally when you don't even, you don't have the money, but you see this thing and you're like, oh. Well, and and for me, it's always been the uh, the Weta ray guns. You know, yeah, like... I, honestly, you know what? I'll tell you a thing that I do regret that I didn't that I had the chance to do it, could have done it, didn't do it, and can never yeah. again. I could have seen one of George Carlin's last shows that was uh, in about twenty minutes away. Oh and I wow! I didn't go because I thought, uh, you know, I'll I'll see it the next time he comes in because you know I don't even remember what the reason was, but I could have gone and it was when they yeah. taped, so it was in his last special part of it. I mean, it wasn't oh, the wow. whole thing. Okay. okay. But and I didn't go because I thought, oh, he'll come back around again if he's coming here. Well, he died like I want to say six months later, something like that. So there's one that's an actual regret where it's like, yeah, I could have with very a lot of ease and didn't. And like, nope, can't do it now. That's it. Done. So that's one. That's not a thing, but that's I took my, I took my to wife to Oslo for our honeymoon. Right. And in Oslo, one of my favorite artists uh, has uh, their museum there, which is Gustav Eigland. Can't find his work very easily outside of Norway. Um, I love his work. Uh, and he mostly dealt worked in statues, but some wood blocks. Can't find any of it outside of um, the country. My wife didn't understand why I loved it. And I brought her to the Vigeland Park, which is his sculpture park. But when we were there for our honeymoon, which is years ago now, um, the museum was closed for renovations. I had no idea. I checked mm -hmm. the website and they hadn't said anything. And then when we got there, it was yeah. closed. And I was... I was heartbroken yeah. that I could not bring her there because I was. Yeah. She knows that this is like in my like top five general sure. artists that I, I adore, and I couldn't show her like I, the park is beautiful. I mean, the, and the, and it's full of his work, but like I couldn't show her the museum that had all his other stuff, things like that. Yeah, and I, I and now it's like you know if I want to go back there, you know, it's not a it's not twenty minutes away. <laughs> 
So, Man. yes, regrets, regrets. Um, but I'll go back at some point, and hopefully it'll still be there. You know, or it'd be better. But oh, yeah. did you uh, did you finish? By the way, with your... uh, the code ozone I have confirmed does still work because they sent me a reminder if, if in case I needed anything of, of the code. So that does still yeah. work. I always was saying up to, for a while. I was saying, I assume it still works. Well, the fact that I got a thing saying, if you forgot your code, let us know. It's like, how would you forget your code? Because I keep, tell, well, maybe keep not telling people, system. keep telling people, yeah. we're still here. Yeah, O Z O N E. Yeah. So if you want to use go. that, you can. And uh, let's see. I already talked. There's going to be late nights coming, so that's the only promotional thing. And outside of that, I simply present you this comedic. Sound effect. Oh no! Explain set. it. No, 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 I no, should, no, no! No, I think no, you should no, explain no, 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 it. No, 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 no! I don't want to explain it yet. I'll explain it in no, between. Just... Let's play one. All right. Let Go people. Ahead. Some people might actually guess. So it's always nice to let people, you know, have. If they know, that's great. And then I'll explain <laughs> before I play the second one. So here we go. Enjoy the next two minutes and sixteen seconds. Or so. Oh my God! Is it that long? <laughs> it is that long. <laughs> well, especially because I had to slow it down. Masturbating. <laughs> you know what? Let me rephrase it. It sounds like a demon masturbating using a live goat. Uh, you know, the best part is there are probably people who tune out for the intro part now and they weren't paying attention and now this shit's on. I've suggested making this. I'm pretty sure. Near that. <laughs> you should definitely explain now what it is. It's not over yet. I mean, they probably should have guessed from the fact that you laughed at one point during it. It's pretty similar. So that was a pitched up and slightly sped up version of Lando laughing and singing the uh, the song when I Joe, Joe left. left to get a drink, but we were recording. Yeah, and so I love to fuck so we around. Didn't, we didn't stop the recording. That's what we did. Yeah, you kept recording. And I love to fuck around with, with the sound when he leaves. And he didn't know that that was there until I sent the files in. And then you, you just discovered that there. Well, I saw the waveforms and I thought, oh, it did something. It played yes. uh, after our shows for a while. I was told. Did to it really? It no. Yeah, I put it. I put it as a hidden thing at the end. <laughs> when it happened, for maybe I'm going to say, twenty five to thirty shows, I put it at the end. God. Kind of after some silence, almost like a Nirvana, oh, man. you know, endless nameless thing. All right, so here's uh. another version of it, but this time it's pitched down and slowed down more. So this is the the demon version. <laughs> Oh, God, I realized how loud it was. Hold on. I'll pull the volume down a little bit on that. Bear with me. There we go.
Oh, man. I find it very hard to take myself seriously after all that. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad oh, I didn't listen no. to the whole thing here's, before. Here's the, here's the masturbating with a live goat. Got it. Did you, ever watch, did you ever watch oh, Ugly God. Americans? Oh, I love that show. Yes, of course. Remember, uh, remember wait, the big tw- twin? Yeah, the, yeah, the big demon boss. Oh, the, uh, the not the yeah, the, not the father, but uh, no, the father, his the direct boss. boss. Yeah. The one who was yeah. always who? Yeah, he, yes, uh, Twain yeah. was his name. Twain, yeah, Twain is his yep. name. Yeah, and yeah, that that made me think. Uh, that made me think of him. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> yes, I make weird noises when I'm bored. Yeah, I like to fuck great. around and be ridiculous. Oh boy. It's just sometimes it gets recorded. Yeah, so. that one time. That was a good one. Yep. Anyway, you had something to start with? That's all I had. That's the <laughs> end of it. I love that that was your Easter egg for, yep. like, the, the end of the show. Yeah. And anybody, and anybody who was waiting for the file to end was like, what the fuck? Well, that's the you thing. Because, you know, if you look at the length, you know that it's not actually over because there's a good couple of minutes left. So it was a little bit of a, you know. Oh, God. Thing. That's funny. Um, no, I have, I have a, a, a machine learning topic. Oh, good. But not, but not the type that we normally deal with. This one is mm. actually caused me some, um, debate, which is why oh. I'm bringing it to the table because I don't want to, we don't need to have the same fucking talk again. Sure. So I have been, so there's a lot of art that's fallen into comments, right? Yeah. And, um, you can get really good scans of it. So, for example, there's a Starry Night by Van Gogh scan that's like 300 megabytes, fucking huge. Right. And you can, uh, if you find a good company, you can print out a fabulous version of it if that's what you want. And I've been putting up a lot of art in my office. And, you know, Joe and I Joe and I often talk about art and prints and stuff like that. And uh, I, was, uh, I was looking for art, you know, and I was using this WikiCommons thing saying, hey, I'll find scans of my favorite paintings that are in there that are in you know basically in the uh open commons is it open commons what do you call it uh well there's uh open or no create um public domain creative, is one yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah so the, some of the stuff is public domain and some of the stuff is that museums are allowing you to to have scans of it to to see and stuff like that so yeah so i was going to print myself some art so I, while i was digging through that i found a clip painting a, a Gustav Klimt painting, who is one of my other favorite artists, that was colored. And I know this painting. It isn't colored. It's black and white. Um, it's black and white because it, uh, the original was, I'm pretty sure, destroyed during the war. Destroyed or lost. Um, and I was like, what the fuck is this? So I, I click on the information for it, and they're like, well, the painting is being posted by the Google Arts Initiative or something like that, right? So I tracked it back to that. Google Arts Initiative. There's the fucking painting. Not only that, there's two others that I know are also like incomplete or destroyed works. So I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I, they have a, uh, uh, so they're, they're listed as being machine learning recolored. And I was like, oh, there's a story here. So then I track that back to the Belvedere. The Belvedere is one of the museums in, um, oh, God, what is it? Um, Vienna, Vienna, Austria. Um, Vienna, is the Belvedere has a lot of Klimt's work. And apparently they, I, I guess they got help from Google, um, but they essentially wanted to know what these paintings, there's these three paintings, um, one of them is called Medicine. Uh, another one's called Jurisprudence, and then, oh, fuck, what's the third one called? I can't remember now. I have a link for this, too, because they, they created this 
the Google, Google Arts and Culture created this entire page to Klimt, which actually I love. If you like Klimt at all, if you want to learn about him, they have this page that's like all his work and, and you know, it's a huge art history lesson about him. But um, they wanted to know what these works would look like colored. So they, they essentially got a bunch of Klimt experts and it looks like they... They had descriptions of what the original paintings look like. So they had an idea of where the colors, like what was what colored vaguely. You know what I mean? Um, they had an idea of it. Send me, uh, by the way, the link to this so I can put it in the show notes. Yep. Hold on. So they, they and you have to, you have to dig through because the, the whole page is, is all this, but there's a, sure. it's referred to as the, um, or is it uh, the Klimt uh, Recolor Project, or the color, yeah, the Klimt Color Enigma? That'll if you if you oh, Google okay. search. Okay, I'll, I'll look for that then. Never mind. But uh, no, I can just send it to you. I got it right here. So, uh, here see, yeah, they uh, they wanted to find out what these paintings would look like. So they had these. They got uh, Klimt experts, and they examined the way he colored other paintings, and then they used machine learning with all this information, and these experts. And and worked on it till they produced what they think is a pretty close approximation of what these three paintings would look like completed, right? And I'm torn <laughs> because um, on one hand, it, it's I like the art project. I like the project of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I do worry about its gateway drug nature. Do you know what I mean? This this goes back to the whole. Um, well, let me let me ask this because you would yeah. probably know this. I, I could yeah. read this whole thing. But OK, the black and white ones. Yeah. These are paintings. These are, are these, these are roughs. These are roughs. OK, and so these were never completed by. No, Clint, they were. Because... They were. Those are the sketches and the and the roughs. They were completed and they were destroyed. Oh, so these did exist as they color existed. Oh, works. yeah, they existed. There were real paintings. Okay. They were destroyed okay. in the war. Okay. All right. Destroyed or lost in the war. OK, so that completely changes my opinion. on so Right. Um, and, and like I said, I like there's a part of me that really likes it. Like I'll do, I'll do my pro and con here for you. My pro is I really like it. I love Klimt. I love the fact they brought these experts on and they tried to approximate it. I love that they used the bones of what, what was there. And they had a lot of information about what, how it was supposed to look. And they did this. I do love that. Um, uh, enough so that like I, I printed one out to kind of get a, a feel for how it looks, you know, like I don't want to see it on a screen. I want to see it. You know, I, I, honestly, I want to see it on like canvas to get a better sense of it because that's you know that that i i think you get the best sense of art when you see it printed out on like good paper or canvas somewhere i i think art is art gets too much from the light of a screen and i like to see it stand on its own right that's my opinion um and when i look at this stuff on like printed out i, I printed it as a photograph because i don't have anything better here um I looked at it and I was like, Jesus, man. It, yeah, it's like, it's very clipped. I was like, if I, I, if I hadn't known a lot of his work, I may have just passed this off as a previous version or something like that. Because Klimt has versions. Like his one painting, Death, there's two versions of it. There's an early version and then there's the, the, the finished, the, the, the big version that you, that you see most places. Um, but there's an early version that's much more... Uh, it looks deflated, I guess, is another way to describe it. Um, it's not as sharp. Uh, but they're both they're both his work. So I'm, I might have missed it if I if I didn't know. You know, uh, my wife didn't know. <laughs> most most people who don't like the artist probably wouldn't know. Uh, but it's weird. I guess here's my cons now, which is that though I love the idea of this. So it's because though it's neat to look at. And, I you know, there is a part of me that worries that. It gives people ideas because this time we're putting color in, right? And, and not just color. I mean, they're putting color. They're putting shading in. I mean, you know, they didn't just like uh, this. This isn't just like having a colorist go in. You know, they went in and they added, you know, the, 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 the toning, right? What's to stop someone 
down the down the road going you know what we recolored that painting why don't we see if we can with the help of klimt experts recreate or, or create a klimt painting from scratch we did the colors why couldn't we do any why, why can't we make a variation on the kiss which is like one of his most popular paintings right and that and it worries me because it is the kind of thing that we do. Like we have a lot of of, of tech, techno creep, where basically we do one thing, and it's the whole we cloned a sheep, let's clone a cow. Hey, let's clone a, a mastodon. Let's clone some dinosaurs. Let's clone people. Oh, trouble. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's not it's not being an alarmist in that sense. It's not like I lose sleep over it. It's more of like a it sets off a kind of thought experiment where I'm like. Yeah, you know that this this could this could graduate into this other thing. I could see somebody, especially having seen these, and the fact that the Belvedere and Google both consider this to be a grand success, and it does look quite good. I mean, so are you seeing the uh, the black and whites and the colored ones? Yeah, I scrolled down the page where it shows like the original. Yeah, and how yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I was yeah. asking if these were because the ones the pictures are clearly of roughs. That's why I was curious if they were actually. Yeah, yeah, completed. those are the yeah the roughs yeah. are what exist. And uh, so it's it's uh, yeah, it's I would like your thoughts on this, because this isn't our usual machine learning. Oh, we had machine learning make, uh, you know, well, whatever bullshit. It sort of is. See, this is this what you're getting at. Yeah, is exactly what a lot of people are concerned about and where I actually share the not hysteria, but the concern. And that is the idea that there should be an ability to say to these models, I don't yeah. want my work p as part of what you're doing. Do whatever you want with people who don't care. Fine. They want well, their the thing, Well, the thing is, Klimt is dead and all his work is in Well, is in but, he, Comet, but his, uh... his work is managed by someone, right? There's an estate or something in charge. It's not just... Well, some, someone owns the work, yeah. Well, okay. So, so there's two parts to what you're talking about. Yeah. So the first thing is... That it was a completed work that was destroyed, that's interesting because I'm curious. I mean, I guess not. There were no photos of the completed works or anything that survived. Nothing. It's just they're just gone. Yeah. Because the fact that they had to analyze other works as opposed to like photos or whatever tells me, oh, there was no documented anything in the finished. No, parts. I mean, there may be. I mean, there may be photos, but the photos are going to be black and white. Well, uh, that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's like, true. It, probably. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So the. The coloring of them, I have no problem with because they were because if they had been finished in black and white and now they inserted color. No, no. Yeah, that's the thing that they were all that what all they were color. All we have yeah. is black and white. Yeah. And so that's. There's an interesting debate to be had in there about whether you should try to replicate the artist's vision without the artist present. That's a very nuanced and very subjective discussion because there's nothing to say that these produced finals are anywhere it assumes that Klimt never varied from his other ways of doing work which is a pretty dangerous assumption no and and here's the thing like having seen some of his early work and his later work i mean there's a lot of variation in his work because i mean not everything look you know like everyone knows the kiss the kiss has got yes. all that pattern work and everything like that sure. that's not that's not all his work and some right. of his later work was very asian um, influenced, but uh, even and, and within, see, even, yeah. even within a period where an artist was doing one style dominantly, it doesn't mean yeah, that they always fact, were. If you look at some of his first paintings when him and his, so him and his brother basically started like a painting business together. Um, some of his earliest work, uh, was very, very like straightforward. Like one of his earliest famous works is the opera house in Vienna. And if you look at it, it's just the opera house. But what's really fascinating about it is that there's a uh, he individually painted like virtually all the faces in the crowd. And what ended up happening is that people started basically paying him and his brother to paint their faces into different places yeah, in the theater. Them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, they yeah. were like, well, I want I want to be seen as the yeah. person that was in this box. And so like, yeah. But like if you see that painting and then you see the kiss, like anyone who knows art will look at it and be like, OK, I can see. I can see the bridge between these two. I can see the style, like like the, the the physical style of like faces and things like that. But they couldn't be more different. 
like one is abstract and the other one is like very much like a uh, a painted photograph you know what i mean right and so uh, I, and that's what i'm getting at as far as the, my first reaction to it is well this doesn't actually mean anything to me it's not actually there's no way to know that this is actually what the finished ones look oh, like no. so this is yeah no 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 this is yeah. a this is an experiment right but this that's is, this that is, is more a, of a is, but the that, fear well we're going to get is, to that so yeah, okay uh, on the one hand, the idea of whether these are actually finished crimped works or whether they represent anything of what it would have been, we don't know. So, but the fact that they existed and they're trying to recreate those, I think that's an interesting idea. That that I actually don't think, you know, because if he had finished them in black and white and now they were making a colored version of it, I'd say, yeah, he wanted it to be in black and white. So now you're starting to override into we're dictating what the artist's intent is. I don't like that, but that's not this. So we put that aside. Now, as far as your fear of, okay, now you can just generate new Klimt stuff, or what you're saying is, well, no kidding. That's that's what a lot of people are pissed off when it comes to AI about, because I'll give you an example. Years ago, pre any of this machine learning crap, Coop very famously has a image of a devil smoking a cigar. It's become pretty much oh, the, yeah, the yeah. image it's most iconic associated Iconic for him, right. yeah. I didn't like the cigar, so I went into Photoshop and I removed it. So I have a version of his devil head that's just laughing, which I've always preferred. I, I don't I did, sell it. I did not. I did not know you did that. Well, because I only did it for me. Because yeah, I was but using you, it. But, as but a, here's like the a, thing: I I think that what an individual does for themselves is very different. And you and I, uh, the oh, last yeah, time, I, we, last time, last time we recorded, we had a whole conversation about uh, people who are willing to change reality to make it suit them, right? And there's and that's the thing is that you saw something, you you wanted to change it for your own personal consumption, right? You didn't make any money off of it, you just did it for yourself. I well, think okay. that's perfectly fine. Right. But I could easily today, right now, if I was a scumbag, I could go to T Public or Redbubble and I could put that on a shirt and I could sell it. Yeah, if and you were a scumbag. Is, yeah. yeah. And there's almost nothing that most artists can realistic because Coop has multiple times said these Nothing? companies are letting people st- no not unless Nothing you're going to go to court wait unless you're going to hire a bunch of lawyers and fight yeah. a company which most artists who aren't let's say I don't know Alex Ross or somebody who has a bunch of money because they're constantly working all the time Coop is not a millionaire I'm not saying he's poor but you're talking about a lawsuit that will likely be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is and it go worth over it? the yeah. course of you exactly yeah. it's one of those things is it worth it and so that's what your concern is is exactly what most artists concerns are yeah because as i've said many times if you tried to do this with mickey mouse and disney found out oh they'd fucking kill you a, yeah. yes because disney can <laughs> has the money and the legal resources to destroy you so this is why a lot of artists are pissed off at the fact that there is no consent built into any of these machine models and in yeah. that respect yeah. I'm completely with them. I don't yeah. I, I don't think that any machine, I've said this a million times, I'll say it another million times, no machine is ever going to replicate a person. No. Even these things, if you say, make me a Klimt of, I don't know, Sailor Moon kissing He-Man. It, no, and actually, what I really like is I like it when, I, I do like it when people try, like people, not machines, because there was a, there was a woman who did a... Uh, she did. She basically did a play on the kiss, but she she changed it completely, and it's Gomez and Morticia Adams. And I was like, you know what? I really like that. Like y- you took the the style, like not not all of it, like but you know you basically took the the body shape and everything like that, and it's and it's and it's derivative. It's clearly derivative, right? But you made something new, which is it's Morticia and it's Gomez, and it and it doesn't like if you look at it, other than the fact they're in the same positioning. It's very different, right? But they processed the kiss and they turned it into this. And if there was any couple that you were going to process into that position, it would be Gomez and Morticia Adams. Um, I like that because a person did that. It's when you start saying, you know, I'm going to have this, I have this program that'll turn anything into the kiss. You know what I mean? Right. And that's, that's what I'm getting at is, and there are people who are going to say, well, what's the difference? What's the difference if a machine does it or a person does it? And there is a difference. There is a difference in that when the person transforms something, right? Now, now, if you want to strip it all away and, and destroy all nuance, yes, there functionally is no difference. 
what I think what what people are bothered by, and this is the example I've used in like in terms of my work and why I would want any of these machines to use it is it's fine when you're using things for personal use in most cases. But if I were to find out a month from now that somebody had taken some illustration of mine and they were putting neo-Nazi imagery into it and it was being used in leaflets that were being passed around to the KKK or something, I would be very pissed off about it. Even though they're not selling it, it's personal use. Technically, it is taking my work and perverting it and molding it to support something that I would like to see destroyed from the face of the earth. And so there should be some mechanism for me to prevent that. Some people don't care. That's fine. You don't have to care. If you don't care about your work being used in ways that would probably offend you if you do about it, because, hey, as long as you never see it, it's, you know, out of sight, out of mind, fine. But many people just want the ability to say, I don't want, and so Klimt's estate or whoever's managing that should have a mechanism to say, do not allow this type well, of this work. Now, you can try no, no, to emulate it. The the counter to that, though, is what happens when whoever owns the estate is sitting there going, hey, we can make more money off this. Well, that that you can't do anything about that. So what? Yeah. That's that's an yeah. artist's prerogative. Well, it's you know, the same it's way. like I was saying to you before that there's so there's a website called Frazetta Girls. Um, and what's amusing to me. So they have they they have the right to sell. I think it's his is Frazetta's granddaughters. They have the right to sell his stuff and they do very good um, prints. They do very good prints of Frazetta's work. Uh, like you know, they are definitely very high quality, right? They're beautiful. But at one point they're like, oh, we have this Frazetta special edition print we're doing and it's signed by his granddaughter. And I was kind of sitting there going, why does that matter? Like, what is the... Well, to me it wouldn't, but, you know, to others I, it's the... Yes, it's I'm the saying, like, of, is it... you know? Is that is does that matter? Like, am, am I just not yeah, seeing? Well, like... No, so, some people. It, it, I understand why some people might value it. it. It's the idea of you know, it's the same thing where I don't understand why somebody's like, I was related to King Gustav of 1776. Yeah, so what? You don't know him. You never met he him. Would, he he was a shit. psychopath. <laughs> well, even if he was, even if he was the greatest king of all in Dutch history, and I'm just, a, I don't know if Gustav is even a Dutch name, but let's just say it is. Even if he was, you know, Prince Gustav of Dutch. Or du- du- what is Dutch? Uh, Dutch. Holland? <laughs> Sorry. I'm an asshole. Yeah, I, I'm, a, you... I'm a doofus. That's show title, though. Prince Gustav of Dutch. Yeah. Good. Okay. Anyway, it, so let's say Prince Gustav was the greatest ruler, the most benevolent, yeah. who treated everyone well and yeah, established wonderful. So, yeah. uh, okay, all that great stuff. But you're, even if you were a granddaughter and knew him, so what? Even if you met your grandfather and he had he had sat there and imparted the skills of being a great ruler to you. Well, so. But there are people who are treated because they are associated to royalty. You know this in countries. They have a privileged position in society for no reason I can fathom other than they probably established it that way to keep their their heirs going. So do I understand why the granddaughter or daughter of yeah. Frazetta's signature and, and, could have any yeah, meaning? And, no. And to be clear here, I'm not giving them any shit. They do wonderful prints. I buy stuff from them. They have the right to sell them from the estate. That's They're very great. Well, if and if get, somebody says, yeah. I want to pay for your signature, well, then go I for just, it because most people can't pull that off. I just don't understand why having the signature when the granddaughters is important. It's It was just a weird – it wasn't like a these terrible people. No, not at all. I was just confused by it because I was like, why is this – why is this a thing? That's all. Um, but getting back to the matter at hand. Uh, yes. Um, well, you know what? If Frazetta's granddaughters decided they were going to use AI to produce, like, you know, new style Frazetta works or some shit like that, you know, I'd be like, oh, yeah, but what? But but part of what was the work was the spirit and imagination of the man that was created by his unique imprint of life. You know, it, it's... You know, it's the same way that sometimes they have writers die and then they have another writer like uh, Tom Clancy where people continue writing like Tom Clancy novels. So it'll be like a Tom Clancy novel by sure. Joe Smo, right? Yeah. And you're like, well, it's not really a Tom Clancy novel, is it? Because you're just well, using the okay, world he made. This is where it gets a little murky. And I would I yeah. actually have a bit of a devil's advocate position here because okay. to me. As long, this is where it gets, this is where I think it's important to just understand what's happening. 
Okay. As long as people, when you go into the store, bookstore, yeah, right, Got uh, shelf, Tom Clancy novels. Yeah. As long as it is clear that what you're buying wasn't yeah. written by Tom Clancy, but is instead yeah. using his characters and his style, whatever, yes. I have no issue with it. Well, if it's, it's like, presented the way it doesn't make sense. That's when I remember Frank problem. Herbert's kids. They were like, "Oh, it, this is a continuation of the Dune books. It's by his, it, you know, it's by Frank Herbert's son." And I'm kind of like, "What do I give a shit about Frank Herbert's son?" Like, yeah, no, I agree. You know, like he didn't create this world. This didn't come from his unique imprint. You know, he's some. He's not somehow uh, godly special because he he grew up in the light of this man. This man was this man. Frank Herbert no, I, was Frank Herbert, and no one can be Frank Herbert. Yes, you know, Terry no, Pratchett I, I, destroyed all his unfinished work. Specifically, well, see, he didn't want to. He didn't want that, to deal with any of this shit. And that, he didn't want that anybody. Tells you yeah, <laughs> somebody who had a very clear understanding of what he wanted his work to do and be, right? Yeah. And and I would imagine I don't know this that he probably has something written into his will or whatever that no books shall be written that ha- you know whatever or that that are com- no he he blew it up. Like he literally well, no, but I mean, blew it but up. Somebody could write a book tomorrow using his characters is what I'm saying. Unless he's got something prohibiting it, which he yeah, no, he he was strongly against that. Right. So that's that's what I'm saying is that's yeah. where this Honestly, is why the I, yeah. I, I the 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 new Good Omen show has come out with uh yeah what do you call it yeah, yeah with, David uh, Tennant and David Tennant and uh, I don't remember uh, the guy's, guy's name. name Michael Sheen Michael Sheen that's it um the new came it came out and I'm kind of sitting there going. You know, Neil Gaiman was the weaker half of Good Omens for me. Now, I like the show, like the the first season, uh, the first book. I like Good Omens, and I like David Tennant quite a bit. He's a great Crowley. But there's kind of a weirdness because I'm like, can you can you guys really do this like without Pratchett? And um, and then I and then I think to myself, you know what? It was so transformed by the process of putting it on TV anyway that you lost a lot of the Pratchett. They, I mean, this is the whole, you know, when they, they, when, they, when they make a novel into a show or a movie, you lose a lot of what made the book. Well, sure. they already lost most of Pratchett in the process. And having watched, like, the first, I, well, I think I watched the first two episodes of it. No, it's not, it's not Good Omens. It's very different. I'm not there anymore because of Pratchett. I'm there because I like Michael Sheen and Damon Tennant. And I'm not even there for Neil Gaiman. Yeah, well, that, you know well, what that's I mean. Fine. Um, but but I'm glad. But that's what, I'm, I'm, that's what yeah. I mean about that's the the thing that I think is important is the 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 mechanisms and the clarity. The mechanism for someone to say, I and and this is the classic George Lucas example. I use this all the time. All right. George Lucas can destroy Star Wars all he wants. That's not my problem. I don't care that he made the prequels and doctored the hell out of the originals and, you know, replaced the return of the Jedi dancing. I really don't care about that. What bothers me is that you can't see the ones before he did it. Oh, because he doesn't leave the originals out anymore. Right. And that's where the Klimt stuff. Okay. Somebody says, I want to make a million versions of a Klimt interpretation of X, right? They make 15 different things. Yeah. As long as you are very clearly aware that that's what they are and they're yeah. not Klimt and he didn't create them, I don't care. What yeah, and pro- the problem and is that there's so much murkiness because people yeah. don't point that out because they know in the back of their head, no matter how much they may protest to the otherwise, yeah, they will s- insist over and over that they are artists and that they are doing everybody every bit as much of creative work by coming up with the prompt and applying it and it's just transformative just like artists have always copied from each other and my response to that is always then why aren't you more transparent about what you're doing because most of them are not most of them present these things as if they are the artist solely by themselves when that is absolutely not the case at best in the scenario you lay out of somebody takes Clint and says, I want to see Daffy Duck hitting Bugs Bunny in the head with a hammer in the style of Clint. At best, that person is a third collaborator after Clint and the machine. At yes. best. Yeah. But they yeah. present the work most times as if they are the artist and they have created a work. Lies. No, you haven't. I don't care, but don't lie about it. You could do whatever you want, but don't fucking lie to me about it. Be honest and say that 
Not only did I need a machine to get this to work, which I don't even have a problem with that, as I've said many times too, the best part about things like this is that they will allow people who have a creative spark that for some reason can't express it. For example, quadriplegic, cerebral palsy, something else, where in their mind they can imagine something wonderful, but they have no mechanism to express it. Those are the people hey, that listen, should use these things. I write because I can't draw. Well, but but you can write. You know what I mean? No, I know, but, but what I'm saying is there are people who want to create one way and and don't have the ability. Sorry, I just heard my kids through the door. I think they're going to ah. bed. They're going oh. to bed, yes. Ah. I just heard my son through the door, and I was like, is someone talking to me? Oh. Uh, anyway, um, there there are ways of creating that people aspire to, and there's the reality of what you're capable of doing, right? In my mind, since I was a little kid, I wanted to be like Ketsuhiro Tomo, Alex Ross, before Alex Ross existed. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to be that guy that could draw everything. And luckily, or unluckily for me, I grew up with guys that could draw like that. Like, there was these two guys uh, that I've known since uh, elementary school that were, you know those guys who are, like, prodigies? Like, oh, sure, incredible. Yeah. Like, the one guy went to work for Tokyo Pop for a short time. He did the Dark Crystal comic book for a while. Um, but he had a hard time with it. And I think what it is is that when, when you're good... I think that when you're good from the get-go, you don't value how amazing it is because you're like, that's ah, just something I do, right? Um, and my and my other friend who was really good, who was incredibly good, I mean, he could, he's one of those guys that he could draw you a Stan Lee comic book. Just do right. it off the top of his head. Just draw it and you'd be like, holy shit. Didn't even go into art. Like he went into something else entirely because he was like, ah, this is just something I do. And you're like, but you do it amazing. But seeing these people, I was like, Jesus I don't stand a chance. I was like, I should do something else. And around that sure. time, I started reading a lot and was like, oh, you know what? I could do this. I was like, I may not be able to draw, but I can write what's in my head. And I wanted right. to get it out of my head so badly that I just started writing it. And that's, you know, I write because I cannot draw for you what's in my head. If, if I could, like, plug you directly into my thought stream and give you my stories visually completely put you into those rooms that I can see in my head. I totally would, but I can't. So I write, I envy you, Joe, because you have the ability to visually create spaces. Well, and you in know? that, in that example, if yeah. you, cause this is a very good example of for yourself. If you said, I want to see dogwood as Otomo, would draw you know what? Oh, that oh, listen, right? listen, I did something recently very different from that, right? I wanted a drawing of a anthropomorphized Godzilla. I told you about this. Yeah. I wanted a drawing of anthropomorphized Godzilla. And I was like, how am I going to do this? And and I, I was just kind of throwing it around. And Joe had actually said to me, hey, you know what? You should ask that that crazy guy that we looked at his art if he takes commissions. Um. The, the thirstastic guy. And I Which was he like, does, yeah, maybe. But not this well, one. Well, he does. Yeah, but yeah, but not this one. But then I, I ended up going, you know what? I, I found a pinup artist and by complete, like, accident found out that he has a thing on Fiverr where well, he'll draw pinups for you. And essentially, you tell him what you're thinking about and then he, he, he takes the job and he'll make it for you. And I told him all about the dream and told him about the idea and, like, what I wanted. And I paid for it. It wasn't. It really wasn't that expensive. I mean, you saw the picture, and like, that's pretty good for you know, not. I mean, I think I paid like a hundred and something bucks for it. Yeah. Right. And I was like, this is great because I gave him. I I liked his style of art. I knew what he was capable of. He, we went through revisions. I think I think with this service you get like three major revisions. So like, I can change the. I can change his from the start, and I can change details. And honestly, he did. Um, I provided him with enough groundwork that he had plenty to work with and there were very few revisions that we need to make. And he produced for me this fantastic anthropomorphized Godzilla um, that I'm going to print and hang over the door to my office because it's fucking hilarious. Now, I could have gone through some kind of weird AI thing. I could have said, fuck, I don't want to deal with anybody and gone to machine learning. Right. 
but I'm more interested in what people create, especially people who have an interest in that kind of style. You know, this guy was a pinup artist. And, 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 you know, he like he seemed like he liked things that were pretty weird. So he was totally good for this. Um, but it's like, yeah, I went a different route. I, I decided to pay an individual who is capable rather than say, I'll just get a computer to do it. I mean, this is really, this goes to like the whole SAG strike, right? Where they're like, no, you know, you, you, you shouldn't you shouldn't just bypass people to make more money. I like, Oh man, who was it? Who said, I mean, it was John Cleese who said, uh, why don't we get AIs to mimic the, uh, the executives? Cause they do a lot less than the actors yeah, and, the, and okay. the screenwriters. Right. Uh, but this guy kind of goes back to that. It's like, yeah, I could have machine learned this. I, mean, I could have machine learning. I hate using that as a verb. Um, this kind of thing, but it's like, no, I, I could have used the I learnings chose... of a machine. Yes. I decided to find an individual with skills who happened to be taking commissions and they did a phenomenal job. And it's like, no, it doesn't always work out like that. And if you, if someone came to me and said, well, I, I tried every Avenue and I couldn't find anybody to do this. So I decided to use an AI, a machine learning based system to create it. I don't have a problem with that. I don't. Cause you tried, right. Especially if you yourself cannot create, but like, I'm really good at visualizing things. I'm really good at visualizing things. I just can't get it out any other way. So I need to, you know, and, and it's, it was funny because I provided so much groundwork for this guy that he, he it was easy for him because I gave him a whole map, you know? Um, and it's kind of like, yeah, like, like I said, I envy you, Joe, because you can see it in your head and you can get pretty close to what you see in your head. I know you can't get a hundred percent because we've talked about this before. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, and then you get into this whole thing with like, you know, when is machine learning okay? And it's like, well, you were saying, well, you were saying with, with somebody who doesn't have the ability to actually, you know, physically. Well, or, or this yeah. was going to be my, when you, when you brought up the initial idea, this was going to be my other point is, you know, let's say that instead of going to, to this artist on Fiverr, yeah. that you really wanted it to be Katsuhiro Otomo. But I, as far as I know, he doesn't do commissions or, you know, you probably couldn't afford them, right? No, not But can't if you went that. to, yeah, well, I mean, maybe, you don't, you don't really know. I mean, uh, for all you know, doing a small image, and it's, some artists work more reasonably than you think. So maybe, he, maybe it would be interesting for him to do something off the beaten path because I'm betting that 90% of what's he get, what he gets is Akira pictures. And I want somebody Akira, came and said, man. I want a Godzilla, you know, like in this style. He was like, huh. I don't get to draw Godzilla very often. Sure. You know, I mean, I'm not saying do it for five bucks, but he might be more reasonable than you think if you give him something that's a creative challenge or, you know, a diversion. Right. And, so, and if anybody's wondering, this artist who did this for me, his name is Lucas Silva. He has an Instagram uh, and he has a Fiverr. I think it's called The Art of Lucas Silva. Um, and he does fantastic pinups. Uh, and most of it's like DC, Wonder Woman, um some of it's vaguely safe for work a lot of it is very not safe for work <laughs> he has he has probably one of my one of my favorite pinups of wonder woman i've ever seen and he has man he has some really great storm one uh ones from the x-men but uh, if you're curious yes his name is the, i'm pretty sure his, his instagram is the art of lucas silva um it's worth checking him out uh and uh he does great work so you know, I might as well, I might as well, you know, throw, sure, plug him, throw some attention his way because he did good yeah. by me. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but yeah, but that's, I, if if yeah, you were on. set on that and yeah. you couldn't get that, and you went to a machine yeah. and said, "I'd like Godzilla as drawn by Otomo," and you know, this, yeah. this, and this, and all you're doing is putting it over your door in your office, I don't see any problem with that. Were you to start selling them, there's a problem. Yeah. Well, listen, you know, you know I uh, was it the AI learn. I I have done. I told you I did the whole AI portraits thing, right? Because I thought it was pretty funny, and I've gotten sure. photo uh, yeah. paint things right. where it made it made like a artsy looking thing of my wife, right? Or like of my of you know, and yeah. I was like, good. This is just a photo of my wife that looks like it was done in watercolor. I'm gonna frame that and I'm gonna put it on my wall. Yeah. I know what it is, and it's right. fun. It's like That's a funny fun. little thing. That's not. I think what people yeah. have a problem with. No, it's not. Yeah. It's where they uh, it's where they fire all the actors for a movie and use their likenesses from previous movies and make 20 of them. Or if you found out that somebody had bought uh, Break World and yeah. had made it into that the that the character was Hitler 
and that, you know, he was imagining, you know, that the two worlds were the one where the, the Nazis won and the one where it didn't, and he was oh, transforming well, it. hold on. You know, let me tell you, because you're getting into a weird territory now of, like, interpretation, too, because like I, I especially hate when somebody takes a piece of work that you like or something like that, right, and then they attach some kind of bizarre white power interpretation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is yeah, that's they're like, why... no, really, what this book is about – is how the white man should be a power, you know. Well, like, no, okay, but, no, but not only that. Not let's a, go a step further. Let's say they really loved your your you writing know, and and the idea yeah. of all the characters. But what they did was they took all the imaginary characters and made them into yeah. Hitler's lieutenants, I and know. the main yeah, character oh, was Hitler. And then they changed the ending so that it wasn't ambiguous, but that in fact he realized oh. that he woke up into where he had won. Oh, you mean? And like, he was like, you know, and this is oh. you know, I don't know, uh, Reich World, Reich World, I, bestseller I in the you know I the underworld. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if that's how that works. Oh, that wouldn't really okay. be. That wouldn't be really buying my book, would it? I mean, well, no, no, okay, no, no. But if, in other words, if they were only changing small bits and the rest was verbatim with character name changes. Oh, would so you they be just fine with they it? just change. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know of that ever happening. But yes, that would suck. Well, but that this is where yeah. when people say, well, art as long as it's transformative, it's fine. I'm like, no, stop. Don't just say that. Yeah. Well, it's the same know, way when people um, say all artists steal, and I'm like, no, stop. Don't say no, that. No, no. That's all, not all true. All artists get affected. Artists are by and large sensitives. Well, I do believe there's, that. There's and inspiration. Get, there is borrowing of things. Yeah, right? they get but affected. They, but I say this. And I've used this. It. I've used this example with people a number of times, and every time they admit that what I'm saying, you know, that it, because people are like, well, you know, you. I, I said, if they copy everything and they change one thing, is that transformative? Yeah, but well, also, listen, I don't know. And I would say, OK, but would you have any respect for that person as an artist if all they did was change? For example, you do yeah. a painting and they change orange to red. Otherwise, it's the same painting. Is that transformative? Well, that, that, well that's technically, transformative, ah, yeah. technically no, but, it is. But you would never respect that person. Hold on. Here's a great example. That guy, Lucas Silva, that I got the thing from. Right. Yeah. He. um he has a very Adam Hughes, Frank Cho style, right? Yeah. It's not Adam Hughes or Frank Cho, but you can see the DNA. And I li- personally, well, that's I okay. like that. That's okay. That's like the guy who's doing all the the Mignola, Mike Mignola Hellboy comics now. Mignola picked him because he was well, like, oh, you look kind of well, like my stuff. Or Why Jim Lee. Jim Lee, comics? everything looked like Jim Lee when he got big. Everybody was oh, doing yeah. the cross hatching thing with the shoulders and the dark circle everywhere. <laughs> you saw it everywhere. Even Liefeld yes. was being imitated with that. Yeah. And that's one thing where you sit there and go, OK, you know, th- there are people who did that and then developed their own style. And to, to me, it's like, well, I respect those people. Anybody who's just imitating. I'm not saying it's illegal, but I don't look at them and think that they're actually good artists. I look at them. I'm like, yeah, you're ripping somebody off. That's that's so. I'm not saying that there isn't an element of copying. I mean, yeah. you look at my work, and you will see Art Adams sprinkled all over there. I make no secret about oh, that. Oh, I see Art Adams. I see Coop in there. And sure, it, it's I, I, yes, because of I know I know your influences, so I see it. Right, but you, you would know? never confuse something I drew with what Art Adams did, even if I did something of a similar detail level. You would yeah. not mistake them, you know, no, or you I mean, might think it's Art got, Adams I mean, when he was drunk. Maybe you've got <laughs> really drunk, really fucking drunk. <laughs> you've got. You've got Katsuhiro Tomo in there as well. well. That's what I'm saying. So that's yeah, not listen, when, hey, you know. I love William Gibson. I've got parts of, of Neuromancer memorized, right? Right. He strongly affects my work. Yes, and that's fine. And sh- that stuff's yeah, okay. But, but you're not going to, you know, I'm also not going to produce Neuromancer. You know what I mean? But that, like, and that's why I'm saying, like, with the Tom Clancy thing, I don't have yeah. any problem with them saying this is a Tom Clancy novel as written by Blum. Oh, no, no, no. no. What, what I find know. is, what I, what I don't like with that stuff is when... So, for example, I like uh, Richard K. Morgan and the Altered Carbon books, right? So he wrote he wrote some books about uh, the Takashi Kovach is the is the main character, right? Um, they're doing comic books now that take that essentially he had the rights for Netflix. Netflix was it Netflix or Netflix who did the show? Right? Yeah, it was Netflix. Carbon? Yeah, it was Netflix. Right. Yep. So Netflix did the show, right? So then all of a sudden people paid attention and they started doing graphic novels, right? But they're like new stories, right? They're not written by Richard K. Morgan. He's signed off on them, but they're not written by him. And I looked at them and I was like, you know what? This isn't Takashi Kovacs for me. I was like, this doesn't feel at all like Richard K. Morgan. And the thing is, when I when I 
I want to read Richard K. Morgan because he handles these characters a certain way. This doesn't feel like it. This feels like they signed off on the character and somebody else is writing the character. And it's like, okay, that's fine. That's fine if you just want that world. But I actually want the production of that world from this individual. So if somebody, and, and you'll take it a step further because like Kasiro Tomo, right? Let's say, oh, no, like the guy who's doing Mike Mignola comics. Mike Mignola is still writing them, but he's got this guy drawing them who looks a lot like him. Well, if at some point Mike Mignola goes, you know what? I'm done. This guy can just write it. And he starts writing it. And you, as a longtime reader, sit there and go, this doesn't feel like Hellboy at all. Like, this feels like very different, right? It's because the original creator is gone. It's one of the biggest problems you have with when they jump from one author to another in comics. You know, you have a million Batman comics that are written by a bunch of different people. You know, and when they switch off from one author to another, and you're like, wait a minute, this isn't my Batman. And you're like, yeah, because this person who's writing this version of Batman is taking their own slant on it. This is Ninja Batman. Well, this is Detective Batman. Well, this is Batman who's focused on, you know, his emotional distraughtness. This is Batman who wants to marry Catwoman. You're like, you, you sit there and you go, well, it's not my Batman. And it's like, no. No, because it's, it's shifted to different authors. Different authors create different elements of the character. So if you love the way a certain author has created a world and then they hand it off to somebody else and say, don't worry, you know, the, the it's all in the same vein. You're like, that's fine, but that's not what I want. You know, that people love Star Wars and they want to live in the Star Wars universe. And because of that, they will watch anything Star Wars, right? But you cannot say that all star wars is created equally because there's star wars shit that sucks and there's star wars shit that's great and very sadly very often stuff that comes from the source sometimes is on the sucky side and there's plenty of stuff that's been created like you know uh secondary by by other authors that's been fantastic i mean disney essentially came in and destroyed the expanded universe which had tons of fantastic stories they destroyed a generation of star wars stories luke and leia had kids a bunch of them you know they killed chewbacca <laughs> like, like all this shit happened leia was a jedi you know nope we're gonna wipe the slate clean rather than just film those i mean that's the fucked up part is that if, if Disney had come in and just been like, you know what? We're doing the uh, the whole, um, what do you call it? What was that, that trilogy called? Heir to well, the Empire. Heir, if we're doing Heir to the Empire and we're doing it all with CG. We're going to get the original actors to do the the, uh, the, the mocap and we're doing it all CG. You know what? I'd have been like, cool. I love those books. Why not? You know? Um, but either way. Uh, the original idea of all this was that it's interesting to see Klimt's work painted but it's also scary the idea of if if this now what and I think that's what it becomes and anyone who anyone who can't see that next step think about it well again I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the next step so long as we know what it is it is the yeah. dishonesty well, yes, and but the we disingenuity live... that bothers me. Not but we live in do. the age of, well, this, like we live in the age of fake news. Well, that, and, and that's point, what I'm saying is that's know, where like... that's to me what the things that everybody bypasses. They get so hung up on what the tool can destroy or can do whatever. It's like, well, wait a minute. But, you, you know, where people should be concerned is that you identify these things because, yeah, what, well, here's the thing with here... Klimt is everything else. Here's another thing for you. Right. What if, um, let's say, uh, let me give me a good painting. Somebody who's a little blurry. Uh, you know, Rembrandt, right? So what's that one that he's at? The Night Watch? I think it's the Night Watch. Rembrandt and the Night Watch, right? Very art history, this, uh, this show. So Rembrandt's the Night Watch. Let's say a decade from now, it's getting a bit haggard. Paints. Oh, well, never, never mind. Actually, I have the perfect one. Da Vinci's The, the Last Supper. Remember The Last Supper that we saw on the wall? Yeah, sure. Now, there's multiple versions of The Last Supper, but let's say Da Vinci always fucked around with his paints. Uh, the, the Last Supper is beginning to fade. We're going to go in with an AI, and we're going to sharpen it up, and we're going to make a copy that we claim 
is what the original looked like using machine learning. Where does that live? I think, well, I don't think it matters where it lives. All I think that matters is that it says this is not the original. Not the original. This is a new so version. So as long as they, as long as they yeah. come in, yeah, yeah, as long as they go in saying, "Hey, this is this is," uh, I would put it doctor. right next to the this actual one. I would put it next okay. to it and say, "Here is what it is." If okay. you're a purist and you want to see the original one as it currently yeah. exists, as best as we can maintain it, yeah, here it is. Right. Here is a version that represents the machine's best guess <laughs> at what it looked like the minute the paint dried. Right. I have no issues with that as long as the identification okay. is clear yeah. and people understand what they're looking at and where it came from. Yeah. If they were to take the old one down, put the new one up, not point out how it was made and say, oh, we restored it, but not tell you how or what yeah. it was. That's what the problem is. Well, honestly, that's restor- where the issues are. Restorations have always, in general, been like a bit weird to me. Well, they use restorations are machine learning yeah. through humans. It's a guess. They, don't, yeah. they weren't there. So you you are trying to approximate. That's why it doesn't bother me that much, because this is not yeah. a new thing. The difference is that because the machines can do such a good job so quickly, it is very easy to pass it off as genuine. And it's not. It's yeah. just not. I don't care how 99.9 and a bunch of nines is not 100%. The machine didn't live when the artist did. The machine didn't see the original well, the, as it dried. It, so shut up. It's not mach- a genuine listen, thing. The machine is not alive. Well, I don't I care if it's alive. No, no, no. I don't care if it's no. alive or not. That's not a, in this particular example, that doesn't matter. If the machine you're using was present when Rembrandt finished the painting and scanned it. Oh, in and scan. OK, well, yeah, yeah. See, I'm talking about the whole yeah. producing new work type. of Well, thing yeah, well, it's all the same thing. No, though, no, no, again, no. Listen, we, you, like no. I told you that that uh, the Starry Night thing that, that I've got, that's like a 300 megabyte scan. Of yeah, original, yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. That that is what it looked like at that moment when. Right. You know. So um, if the, if that was made into a print that hung yeah. in a gallery at at perfect representation, yeah. Well, all you have to say is it's a print, but it is what you would see if you saw the original painting. Okay, I don't care. That's fine. So as lo- yeah. So as I long as they is. claim, so as long as they claim the honesty of what it is, you're fine yes. with them fucking around. Right. Okay. It's like I said, the honesty of I, what I, we're looking at is I what's liked important to me seeing it i did i printed it out like i i liked seeing it it just you know there is always that little you know like kind of itching in the back of your brain well like, and and this is the thing is where are we going after this and, well because a lot of a lot of prints that you yeah. buy now are based on photography they're pictures yes, of the work yes, now yes that's always going to lose something in detail at some yeah. point i am confident oh, if they don't already yeah. have it that they will have some way to have a scanner that can get every little I, detail without I destroying want, it. I want a topographical scan of works of yes. art that I well, love. That, and then I and want that's what I'm 3D, saying. I want them 3D printed. Yeah, so if you want to have a floor-to-ceiling yeah. representation of the kiss with all of the, the all, texture yeah, to it. Yeah, all the texture, yeah. Oh, why God, shouldn't you be that. able to have that? Oh, you should be able See, to. But that's different. That's a scan. That's a scan reproduction. That's not... Yes. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But I that's what I'm saying. That. You're, you were, if somebody came in and you claimed it was an original, <laughs> that's bad. But if you say, yeah, yeah, I got this 3D scan yeah. that allowed me to even have the brush, you can feel it. Feel it. It's fine. Because then you'd be able to. You wouldn't be able to do yeah. the original like that because you destroy it. But you're in your house. Happen. You'd be like, look, touch it. You can actually feel the brush strokes. <laughs> touch my painting. Come here, touch, touch my, my painting. <laughs> touch the kiss. It would be great. And I don't have any issue with that. That's fine. Yeah. That's not a perversion. Because no, it's not. That's home use. Yeah. Whereas if yeah. you said I have the kiss, this is the one, not the one in the uh, the gallery. No, this is the Fuck real that one. one. Yeah. Well, then you're an asshole. Well, I've had I've had people and tell me before that they prefer, um, they prefer to see like digital versions of paintings because they don't like to have to see the texture. And that's fine. About, that's think, an aesthetic choice. That. Is that, isn't no that an interesting like difference to all this? Where you're like, I'm sitting there going, ah, oh, but I like to see the. I oh no, see, no, like, I, the I understand. Strokes, I know. completely understand that. I am like that with some things. There are some yeah. things. Oh, where... you said you didn't like Alex Ross seeing the originals. Yes. So yeah, okay. because that, yeah. when, when I saw it up close, it it, it broke it a bit for me because you could see too much of it in person. All right. Whereas on the yeah, page, whereas, because it's smaller. When I saw when I saw saw Van Gogh in the in the Dorsey Museum. I I got so close to that goddamn thing, and I was looking at it from like 
the low light to see the way the shadows were cast across yeah. the texture of the paint. Yeah. Oh, God, I love no, that No, that's shit. great. That's, and that's <laughs> what I'm saying about I have no issues with any of that stuff. That's fine. <laughs> as long as you know what it is and there's clarity yeah. about what you're, yeah. what you're experiencing. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make it bad. Yeah. It doesn't mean they shouldn't do it. I just want the honesty. Yes, it, honesty. The honesty. I, know, I, and then, I can get behind that. And then on yeah. the, as far as the machine learning and the, you know, when people resell work of other people, yeah, there's, and a person, an artist should have the ability to say, I do not want my stuff as part of these models. Whether it's a rational objection or not is not the point. It's their work no, I, and they no, should I have ownership think, of it. Yeah, I don't think your work should, they should be allowed to, t- I mean, yeah. This, I mean, and this, um, this happens a lot in music where like, especially with techno where people were sampling and they're like, okay, well, to what degree does this have to be different for it to be considered different? You know, because I didn't. Oh yes. God, didn't. Uh, Vanilla Pharrell? Ice is the big example. Vanilla Ice with ripped off a Queen song and added one thing to it. And there's an interview where he basically admits to it, thinking that he's defending it. It's a famous interview <laughs> where he actually says, "Oh no, ours has a symbol hit in it, and that's the that's the only difference." He's like, "So it's not the same." Well, yes, it is. You know. No. Yeah, no, no, yeah. but I mean, there. And, was it, a and if he had just come out oh, and God, said, "Yeah, there was." There, there. I mean, there's been multiple ones. And if yeah. these people just came out and said, "Yes." We love the riff on this one song, and we yeah. used it, and we did something different with it. Ninety-five oh, percent uh, of the shit would go was away. It Puff Daddy used uh, a, a major portion from Bre- "Every Breath You Take" by the Police, right? Yeah. And apparently, that shit cost him so much money that it was almost not worth making the song. Well, that that essentially most of the money for that, all the royalties for that song, essentially go to Sting. Yeah, well, good. It should. You know, he made it's the like, yeah, well, you, you didn't even ask for fucking permission, dude. Like, you just tried to rip him off. Right. right. If he'd gone to Sting. Yeah. And this is where if Sting said no, then guess what? You can't use it. Or. Yeah. yeah. Or you're going to have to transform it in such a way that you can't you be see, sued over it. Sorry. I, I actually invent think something. that it's I think it's really hard to steal literature in the, in that same way, because. Well, yeah, I, and it I, is because people too, don't that, have the same. Yeah, I said this uh, if I before. read Hemingway and I read Steinbeck, but I don't know which one I'm reading, do you think yeah. I know? But if I know, but I if know? you find you find fifty writers, right, and you give them all the same plot synopsis, give them like a uh, like a uh, uh, we'll call it like a, a ten page plot synopsis of a book, right, of everything that has to happen, right, you're not going to get the same book. Yeah, sure. It'll begin no, and end yeah. in the same place, but those adventures, those descriptions, will be completely different. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, if if you if uh, like if uh, Tolkien you know and Richard K. Morgan had written Neuromancer, <laughs> right? You gave the same premise to the two of them. Man, you couldn't the have same found book. like you couldn't even you couldn't have found a more like perfectly awful person for that book. <laughs> well, that's, see, well, that's what I'm saying is one would spend yeah, 40 like... pages describing the wire that connected the deck to case. And the <laughs> other one would spend 40 pages on Molly's juicy, explosive orgasm. The first time they slept together. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Oh man. You're so right too. That sex scene in the beginning of Neuromancer would have been like that's, 20 pages. Yeah. The, all the, all the, the whole, the punchline of that sex scene would have oh, been man. that every piece of equipment would have been ruined because there would have been juice all over the room. <laughs> right. That's so that's what I'm oh, saying. Oh God. Your use of the word juice is the worst. It's good. Is it fluid, <laughs> liquid, whatever. It is. Cause I know you hate it. Like you hate those like, "Quote unquote juicy sex scenes." No, the the reason I specifically use the uh, uh, juice is because I just heard a song where they say it, like uh, the the it's like a UB forty song where they they're basically talking about like eating a woman out and they're using euphemisms as they have to in songs. <laughs> and I think they said like juice is so sweet, or maybe it was uh, maybe it was Duran Duran, oh, something yep, like that. Yep, there you go. Ah, oh, wow. I think we uh, I think we should move on to our uh, our next topic. Um. Because we could go on, and I think I think juicy. I think it, the the juicy coffin sex is probably uh, the end of this for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So anyone who follows our video games, which I don't know, you haven't posted it yet. Um, the first video will be up by the time this one comes out, which is so funny, right? So we finished. We didn't finish. Oh boy! And by the way, I just the, the last late night that I recorded was the yeah. was the day we finished the game, and I was celebrating the game in that one, and now. Oh boy, go ahead. Yeah, so 
we got to the end of Dead Island 2. And we talked about Dead Island 2 previously. And all that is still true. Let me be clear about that. The enjoyment of Dead Island is still there. The gameplay, all that stuff is still there. But... I, okay, you and I may have a different view on this. No, it no, was because, there no, for be, me. No, but yeah, well, because we still played it and we still had fun killing zombies. The, the gameplay mechanics were fun until the game decided to ruin the rest of the but, game. And, and, and this is the thing. So Joe and I finished the game last night and it was a very sudden like, wait, what? Followed by like so the sudden worst... that I was convinced it wasn't over and Lando knew. Yeah, yeah. I kept saying, yeah. no, 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 there's yeah. more. We can't possibly be at the end. We haven't unlocked. Yeah. Everything. So. So, yeah, the game ended suddenly. It, it had a huge attempt at plot. And then the game ended suddenly. And both of us were like, wait, what a minute. What just happened? And like you said, you didn't even believe it. So we started to discuss it right there and then. Um, and we did. We talked about it for probably like 20 minutes. At which point I was like, I you know should what? have kept recording. I stopped. I should have just let it run. I stopped no, that's it. fine. Because I, I said to you, stop. Let's stop and think about it and come at it. Because we we, I knew we were recording the next day. So I was like, let's stop. Let's stop and let this roll around in our heads a little bit and then come back and discuss it. Um, I did manage to capture weird. one of my thoughts of what was running in my head, by the way. What was that? <laughs> Go on. So I I had noticed that we were very close to the end of the quest cap because they tell you what quest like how many quests you have right I knew we were getting close and uh, and you were like eh, we still have a lot of side stuff and there w- there is still side stuff in the game but it's one of those things where you finish the main story you're kind of like well what's the point um, what are you working towards so we very late in the game so the game up to the time we recorded. There was like one weird thing in there about these people who were immune like us and were kind of like getting in our way. Um, But like, you know, I just figured they were potential villains down the line. They're immune people who were kind of going in the wrong direction, who were kind of kind of embrace their zombiness, whatever. That's not the direction the game went in. And the direction it did go in came late. And was kind of weird. And I remember I joked around with you at one point, too, where I was like, this is going to have a really dark ending because the rest of the game has been so sunny and fucking ridiculous, right? And it did. It tried to have a dark ending, except that neither Joe nor I were not fully informed as to what the fuck was going on. Because all of a sudden, there's these this woman who is kind of like a Bill Gates, Steve Jobs type. And she's become one of the immune like you and being immune gives you special powers. And then all of a sudden, like uh, we find out that the doctor that we thought was so nice and beautifully rendered um, is actually one of the is a scumbag and that he created the virus because now I'm going to attempt to explain this. He the virus actually comes from human DNA It's a ticking time bomb in the general DNA of the human race. And in like a certain year, we're all just going to turn into zombies and the human race is going to terminate. Except for this one in a million um, uh, mutant hybrid, which is the Newman, which is basically these people who are immune to the virus, but have like super abilities and this doctor was basically, he triggered the zombie event so that he could find more Newman, which is what you are. But he also genetically manipulated a child in the womb to make sh- to make them a cure to the zombie DNA virus. Is that what happened? Crock of shit. <laughs> In, like, the last 20% of the game. In fact, most of that in the last, like, 2% of the game. Right? Yeah. You still there? No, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm just, I have a look of disgust on my face that's hard to emote properly vocally. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, while we were playing it, this exposition starts rolling out. Like, we, you know, we, we never really spent much time with the main guy, the doctor's daughter. We didn't think she was that important. And suddenly she's like the most important person in the game. And he's like, oh, you have to protect her because everyone will want her for the cure. And like 
the way he was talking and the way the game was throwing things at us, I was like, holy shit, this is this is the next part of this game. Like, this is the end of the first half, and now it's going to get to this other half where, like, the Newman want to kill her, but she's the cure, but we have to protect her from the governments. Um, but, you know, but at the same time, we need to save the human race, and we need to get her somewhere they can synthesize a cure. Like, I thought this was the beginning of a whole other part of the game but instead it's like oh no it's over and it's like it's like a the first season of a tv show being canceled halfway through the season like never even getting to the end of the show just ending and the thing i think that was the final nail in the coffin for joe was when we found out that they're doing they're doing two add-ons uh a dlc very soon right they have nothing to do with the main story of the game they're about two completely side fucking things. And furthermore, the game runners basically said, well, we want kind of a, you know, a, an ambiguous, inconclusive ending so that people can continue to play. Which I was like, wait a minute. You're basically saying we didn't really give it an ending because we want you to just keep playing our game. And like this gets into the whole idea of, well, you know, so there's no story like did you want this to be a, a an mmo or some shit like like why am i gonna keep going i mean listen even in world of warcraft there was a point in that game where you i mean you you experienced this you played so far into the end game that you were like you know i don't really think there's much more here for me i mean there could if you're some kind of psycho and you're like i want this to be my life right but there's a point where you're like ah, i think i've pretty much done everything i want to do in this game right and when a game does that, where they're like, okay, we're, uh, this is our inconclusive ending. You can do the side quest if you feel like it. And then otherwise, you can just continue to play. They're like, yeah, but what am I playing? Like, what's the point? Like, you didn't really, if you wanted me to just play to play, then you should have built something better into the game. But otherwise, like, now that the story's over, and you're and you're you've essentially said you're not coming back to it. What am I just supposed to hang on, you know, till you decide now it's time to finish the game? You can pay for the DLC and, and finish the game. It's like whatever happened to just getting a game with a complete story. When we reach the end of this okay. the game, because essentially, as you said, I was convinced that the DLC. I said, well, look. It, it, I don't necessarily love that they did this, but if the expansions are going to finish the story, which there was a very natural, because I knew there were two that were announced. Now it may no, they be could. That they, yeah, they yeah, could. One they would be find the yeah. daughter, and the, then the last one would be find the, the head of the Newmans or whatever. And, you know, and I'm like, okay, uh, you know, I don't love that they ship in complete games, but uh, I'll give them the, the possibility that that, that, well, could the be. that would make a lot of sense. And instead the game turned around and said to me, yeah, it said, fuck you, basically. When I played play the wrong clip, sorry. But in any event, what happened was I looked it up and they're completely nothing. One is about a cult and one is about a... What was the other one about? Oh, uh, uh, about some, some, I don't know, fitness group or something? I don't even understand. But at that point, I was already... After we stopped playing, at first I was like... Because you said, oh, well, we can get a couple more hours out of it. You know, we'll do the side quests and... And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, I guess so, because there's still side quests left. And the game basically tells you that. The game, to add insult to injury, and I didn't really process it in the moment because I was still kind of shocked that the game yeah. just ended. So when you said that thing about, oh, we could probably get four or five more hours out of this, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I, game, I said we could probably get a night. A well, night, yeah, a night. I'm sorry, yeah, I said a night. And the game pops up and says, hey, don't worry, the game's not over. Now you can do side quests. So it's not even yeah. what Outriders did where there was an infinite loop of nonsense. Or, as somebody pointed out to me, that in, like, The Division yeah. 2, you had these dark zones where you could go in and you could do fight against players, but you could take bigger risks. Like, there is an end. Yeah. There is a persistent end game. It's boring as shit. We never did it. But yeah. at least well, it's and even, there. even uh, what do you call it? Wildlands had this thing where they basically said, okay, you can replay the game now in ultra hard mode. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Well, we'll a, lot of games, a lot of yeah. games have that or a new game plus. That's fine. Yeah. 
but that is dependent on the game being worth playing again, which if the game has no ending, why am I playing it again? And then after we turned the, the consoles off, before you texted me, I started getting this thought in my head, like, why? Because you had said, we'll get another night out of it. I'm like, but why? Why would I play this? What is the purpose? Because we're going to go and knock things out and get better weapons. For what? They basically destroyed the game for me because I, now I there know, is utterly no point. And then and you sent on. me the message that your wife sent. Uh, I said yeah. you, which <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I told my wife that we'd finished the game and her exact phrase was, you finished it. You just started playing the damn thing. Right. And when you sent me that, <laughs> I'll tell you, this is this is the truth. I turned around, walked into the other room and erased the game off the PS5 right there. I was like, nope, <laughs> fuck this game. Uh, I love your finality. <laughs> I was, I was, I, cause I, I, I thought about that and I'm like, okay, somebody who doesn't even know what happened. <laughs> cause you were pointing out the thing about hours. And I said to you, and I still mean yeah. this, I'm like, I don't care about the hours as long as it's a good game. Hours yeah. don't matter. What, cause there is, I'll a, be honest a, with you, you know, what really broke me, right. Is not that it ended. It, what the game did right after it did, which is that, so to give you an idea, right? So the, two things happened right after the game ended. So the game ended and it was like, oh, hey, um, you know, you can keep playing. And the first thing that happened was we noticed that there was a vendor now in the one room that was like really quite racist. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. the yeah. And, and both of us were like, well, that's a little bit uh, stereotypically racist. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. And then we walked out of this room where we had been, where like kind of the final stuff had happened. And we're immediately thrust into a side quest that was actually really depressing, which is that there is this, there was this uh, uh, influencer that you see throughout the game. One of my two favorite characters from the game. Yeah, she's got a shoulder rig. In the beginning, she was as no annoying as hell. But after a while, we started to kind of enjoy the delusional sense of the character that, you know what, she doesn't care that there's a zombie apocalypse because she's going to get likes and 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 uh you know and support and so she kept making videos and she kept calling us bestie and you know and we we got a lot of amusement out of it right because we were like this is so fucking stupid but then right after the game ends and it goes you can keep playing the quest is that bestie's been bitten and she's basically filming herself turn and you have to kill her and you're like, oh, fuck. And then, yeah, I mean, do me wrong. There were times in the game where I wanted to kill her. But then she she comes running at you as a zombie and you got to kill her. And I'm like, okay. And then you have to upload her video for her where she basically videoed herself turning to get the information out there that there was a zombie apocalypse. And she's saying goodbye to people. And I was like, oh, fucking hell. I'm like, for a game that started out so ridiculous, for a game that's got a character like Carla who is like, so positive even in the face of like you know uh, utter destruction right who who is excited to do fucked up shit and excited that she's gonna fight zombies and make it right to have that be the first thing after the game ends where you're like you can keep playing by the way here's a really depressing quest where you kill uh, a 20 something year old uh, delusional influencer who has kind of grown on you Right. I'm surprised they didn't send us back to kill the artist. Just well, who, for knows? And who knows? Another side quest yeah. is probably that. Yeah. But here's the thing that pissed me off about that yeah. even more. There's a couple things. One is even as it was presented, it was terrible because not just the storyline, which was depressing because we did like the character at that point. But the other thing is they just throw her at you. I didn't even realize we were fighting her at first. So she was dead. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. wait, that was her because they don't. They give these dramatic scenes to other characters that we barely even interact with. Sam, yeah, who's a yeah. character from the first game, who honestly, A, if you didn't play the first game, who gives a shit? And his presence yeah. in this game is basically who gives a shit because all his, the only reason you'd he's even know all, him he's is- He's all he, posture. He, you yeah. never, he never really does shit. Right. And the only reason yeah. we're supposed to care about him is because that the character, the superficial actress character is an ex of his. And now they're back together. So thereby, by transfer of property, honestly, the care. most interesting character in the game to me was the guy with the half burned face, which we barely which got we'll, any of, which we're going to call Hicks from now on. Yeah. Hicks. Hicks. Hicks was the most interesting character to me. Um, yeah. D.I. Hicks. Dead we, Island Hicks. Yeah. And we barely got him. Barely. 
And yet, See, here, when he... here's how the game could have been really interesting and good and might have been worth replaying even in its broken state as it is. I'm going to present you a scenario. You tell me this isn't a thousand times better than the piece of shit we got, right? Basically, same game all the way through until you get to the end, right? Now there's the part yeah. where, sorry it's spoilers, people, but guess what? You don't want to play this game anyway. You're not for the story, anyhow. There's the chopper. At the chopper, Sam is turning. And so this is before we get the cure. There's one dose of a cure, which we, for some reason, decide to use on Sam, which makes no fucking sense, but that's fine. It's, it's the <laughs> bullshit way this game handles things. Uh, so here's the way I'm doing the ending of this game. If I And this is not even re-architecting the whole game. Not really. So don't nobody tell me that it would have been, oh, the development for that would have been, you're talking about re No, fuck you, I'm not. I'm talking about redoing the last 5%. Same scenario happens with one exception. We go into the lab. We come out. We've got the one cure. We go to the helicopter. And you find that Patton is holding his arm and they've restrained Sam. Sam has bitten Patton, D.I. Hicks. Ooh, oh. And now he's going to turn. At the same time, yeah. we get a call from the influencer saying, listen, I'm going to tell you this but because uh, I feel bad about keeping this from you because you've done so much for me, but I've been bitten and I'm probably going to turn soon. And then the game comes up and says, guess what? You can only save one person because you have one cure. Who's it going to be? Oh, and you get a fuck different, you. That's different, a tough and, choice. Well, it is, but it makes Patton you even the with the influencer. Oh, yeah. God and then it. something, and then you have to kill Patton and Sam or Patton and the influencer or Sam and the, whatever you have oh. to kill the other two. Yeah. And then of oh, course yeah, the girl honestly, would react differently. Sam, Sam's not even a choice in, in that for me, it's either the influencer or, or Patton, a, you know, AKA Hicks for us. But if you yeah. had played the first game as Sam and really liked yeah. him, it might be a different yeah. choice for you, but at least the game would then give you a reason to yeah. replay it. Now you oh, could yeah, just true. reload yeah. and you could just yeah, reload and, and redo it's it. That's sad fine, because but, yeah. we were totally on board this game. Till like the 90% mark, 95% right. mark. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was like, wait, what? Here's another thing that pisses me off. We never got to kill Jimmy Montana. Why didn't we get to kill that fucking asshole? Oh, you know what? I did. You know what? I actually enjoyed him at the end. <laughs> well, I mean, he was, but I would have liked to kill him more than the influencer. Oh, died. I would have killed if him. He died. I would have killed him over the influence to our patent at any point. So yeah. he, that's the thing. They yeah. took the characters. Well, I mean, who that I developed. really wanted to kill was the lady in the alligator pants, whose name I can't remember either. Um, Con was it Conrad? Uh, yeah, I think it was Con Conrad. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, the yeah. fact that the fact that they dangled her in front of me through the whole game, and then I didn't even get to fucking fight her. You didn't get much like, of anything with her. We don't, anything, I don't even at the know. End, and the two the, end, the two people like, with her, I barely know anything about. It's yeah, nothing. Yeah, at the end when she's like, "Oh, you couldn't leave the city. I wonder why." And then she like backs away, and, and that's yeah. the end of the game. With and it's like I didn't even get to fight her. Right. I dislike her more than anybody. And here's another like, thing, by the way, for anybody who's like, well. Because, you know, you read this and I've heard people use this defense. Well, what they're doing is they're leaving themselves the opening to, to get into it in the sequel. Hey, assholes. Sequel? This one took seven years. Well, forget even. Fuck. Forget that. <laughs> Deus Ex Mankind Divided was the setup for a third game that we'll likely never get. Don't set up for a fucking sequel because you don't know that it's going to happen. That Dude. company could go defunct tomorrow. The Dying Light people were the creative team from Dead Island. They left Dead Island, and they've made two games since in the yeah. same time. Well, but what I'm saying is you don't set up for a sequel unless you know what's going to happen. There's no reason to think Dead Island 3 will happen. Let me. And here's another reason. Even if it sells really well, the first one sold really well, and the second one went into development hell for something like 13 years. So even if it's a blockbuster... Oh, was it 13? I thought it was 7. Maybe it was... No, I think it was... Hold on, let's see. Dead... I thought it was first announced. I mean, you know, they obviously announced it before. It was it was a sequel to the 2011 game. Okay, so it would have to be when did they announce the second one? 8 years. Uh, more than it says more than 8 years in development hell. So, whatever. Let's say yeah. 7 to 9 years. Even if your game is successful, who's going to go to that and say, "Oh, we're going to we will only spend 7 to 9 years, even if 5 years you don't get usually." So, it's it's a fucking train wreck, and it sucks because the gameplay is great. We were having, as you said, a blast through a lot of it. 
the artist, the character I loved. Even, a lot of these, it's interesting that the yeah, cat, most of the of characters the annoying, who I hated at first, yeah, and then I started to love them really a quick. A lot of the annoying characters actually grow on you pretty quickly. It's Except weird. for Ricky and Roxanne, who I loved right from the jump, right who we never yeah. saw yeah, again. Thing. Yeah, there was no conclusion for them. Don't worry, it'll be in the sequel. Yeah, Maybe. Ricky and Roxanne, you know, like I said, this game feels like you've got half the story. I also have no inclination to play a sequel now. I don't care if they tell me it wraps the story up. You don't trust I don't know it. that. I, yeah, I don't. I don't yeah. trust that unless I read that they literally wrap it all up and there is no intention of a fourth game and they they tie all the loose. And there's ends a up. bow. There's a bow, man. We put a bow on it. <laughs> or if they put a bow in the game that I can shoot, then I might be interested too. But oh, otherwise, yeah, no. Yeah. I wanted that. Crossbow. No, fuck you. Yeah. So and that sucks. This is this is annoying. I mean, Outriders was not a good game. But the gameplay was really good, and that got us to the end, right? But even uh, that concluded. We fought a final oh, boss, yeah, yeah. and there that was part a con- And ended. you do discover what's going on. Yes. Right, you There's can stuff continue that's left to... Open. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Yeah. But this is, has no resolution. It is the literal cliffhanger. And the explanation is so... It's 90% of the plot in the last 1%, which honestly, I didn't even follow a lot of what was going on because it was rapid fired so much yeah. in, in this very hectic action scene where you don't really understand what's going on. And I, like you said, yeah. the, the white haired woman, we barely person. know what the hell she is. I experimented on a baby. And, you know, honestly, for a second there, I didn't realize he was talking about his daughter because I was like, you experimented on babies? And then he's like, I didn't either. Like, yeah, and he's like, oh, honey. and she's like, that was me. And you're like, I'm glad she said something, because I didn't fucking know. And then I read somebody who said, oh, and they basically infer that maybe she's not his daughter. I don't know when that happened. So either this person that said that invented it. Oh, wait, that one. Re- hold on. Hold on. That one review that you read that was like, they're alluding to uh, ap- apocalyptic events in society. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, they, like yeah. ancient ones and all kinds of Cthulhu <laughs> shit. And it's like that. And then somebody's like, you don't know what you're talking about. But honestly, <laughs> when I read that to you, I was like, yeah, this person's fucking clueless. But then I thought, well, you know what? If you don't really if you can't follow it rapid fire, maybe it's not a native English speaker or something like that. Or maybe the translation is not good. I wouldn't blame somebody for misunderstanding it because <laughs> I only followed maybe 60 percent of it. You filled in some of it for me because I was my. I was there, oh, like, what yeah, the fuck it was it was it was quite funny that, yeah, there was stuff there that you were like, I, I didn't get that. Did you get and like that whole yeah. explanation I gave you early on? I had to give Joe that explanation after the game had done it. Yeah, he was because like, I was sure. Happened? Yeah, because I was like, yeah. okay, this is a weird like prelude to the ending, you know and this will get explained. And it's like, no, this is the ending. If you watch, like, eventually when the, when you Joe puts the video out, you can see that like Joe doesn't know what's going on, and I I, say I don't know what's going. On. Yeah, and at one it. point I I didn't know what was going on, and I started to catch it, uh, um, and then like, but then I had I had to think about it. <laughs> I will probably title that video "What the Hell Is Going On." You know, and like the weird thing is, so the Newman aren't the bad guys, but Conrad's well, a bitch. Well, like, okay, no, I I, you know, I think I don't know, but I was the thing I was taking from that was that they are the bad guys, but she somehow thought that because we were one of them, that we would default to their side. That's what I think they're probably setting up is the idea that okay, they're evil, but they well, think the that is, we're just going to side I, with them. I don't know that because the whole thing is that they are. He didn't make them. They're a genetic abnormality. No, but that th- has it's, they're doing the Magneto thing with her. Yeah, that's what yes. they're doing. They're doing yeah. the Magneto Whereas thing. Whereas he created the event because he was trying to find more Newman. Yeah. So no, he's he killed... Mr. Sinister, and she's yes. Magneto. That's what it yes. is. Or yeah. she's a po- or he's Apocalypse. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's and what Carla they're gonna. That's is, the is angle Michelle they're gonna Rodriguez take. Rodriguez is Wolverine. Yeah, they're gonna take the angle that at some way we're gonna have to coexist. That's the actual future because eventually humans will become. You know, this is the solution to stop humans from just dying out. So once we can convince everybody to, you know, get along, then it's it's the the, the or we next or we cure them. Reality. I mean, that's the other thing, right? You well, just cure or them? or it's the thing where we can either cure them or they can become Newmans and everybody lives together and sings on, you know, uh, asteroid X. Kumbaya. Yeah. Right. But Kumbaya, as Kumbaya. presented, we have no idea and there is no guarantee that story ever gets done. So what you have. It's, it's a, a game a with no ending. Poor, it's a piss poor ending is what it is. It's not even an ending. I'm sorry. It's not an ending. That ending that ending gave you whiplash. It was so bad. Yes, because it isn't yeah. an ending. It was a and fight I kept scene going, and a little bit it, of oh, exposition. Man. That's it. I'm trying to think. There's a, wasn't, there's a movie that we saw at some point 
Uh, actually, there's probably a few movies we've seen where, you know, where you're like, you know, the ending is coming. The movie's got like 10 minutes to end it all. And you're like, how can they possibly do this? Well, it, you know yeah. what it is? This game is uh, Matrix Reloaded, but with no guarantee of revolutions. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right? I mean, that's it's what it is. This is Matrix Reloaded, but you don't know because at least those movies they made back to back. You knew you were getting the third one. You knew it. So whether you think it was a good final ending is that's subjective and that's up to you. But you got an ending. This is Matrix Reloaded. This is the bump, bump, yeah, bomb, and, and, and nothing be, else. Yeah, and I'll be clear. My I stand by my original review. I did enjoy the gameplay. I enjoyed where things were going. I liked it. And then it got like the second the whole Newman thing became the point of the story, it just kind of like it just went down the drain. You know, and uh, now you're sitting there going, What? It, yeah, no no no. I my final review for this in my five yeah. minute was if you don't care about story at all, buy it when it's ten dollars. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do not yeah. Pay full price for this thing because you, wanna, listen, you will you feel ripped off. Zombies and that's it. You just want to smash zombies for a while. Go ahead. But even then, do not pay full price. Do no, not no. because it, it, it is it is short. Because here's the thing: I, I, it's just we like spent. I said, oh, we, no, hold on. I want to I want to say this because I looked at the numbers after it was twenty five. We we spent twenty five hours on this game. Right. Right. Yeah. We spent Joe and I have spent ninety plus hours on Sniper Elite. Right. The new West, newest yes. one, right? We've replayed it and, multiple times. And we will probably play it again at some point, right? Yes. I yes. have put 500 hours into Fallout 76. Joe's put six something. Yeah. Right? And Fallout 76 was a broken game. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of that is repetitive, but at least that game came in and said, yeah, we don't really have a story. You're going to have to make it up. So at least they were honest. Again, going back yeah, to my they, honesty. But, they have, they yeah, but, they've released, but they've released a lot of story stuff along the but way. Even, but we were playing it when there wasn't. We were playing oh, we it with no it, story. We played when there was nothing. And yeah. we had a con- fun time because we were aware of what we were getting into. And it yes, was honest about so, yeah. it. I mean, it was a bad it ended up not being what most people wanted, but that's a different thing than them yeah. lying and, and, and saying it's trying, just going to be like the other ones. They've been trying to make it slowly into what people wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they rehabilitated it to some degree, but, but um, it's like when you look at those, those time frames, and you're like, yeah, like 25 hours and neither of us is any interest in going back. Right. It's like, right. well, uh, that's, you know, and you were like, Whereas, well, I'd be okay if it was a good story, but it's not even yes. a good story. Or in the scenario I laid out where, okay, there's different endings and you have to make a difficult decision. And you're like, okay, I want to actually see what, what leads up to the other one. Like, to, you know, because maybe on a replay, we would make a different decision when we paid attention to the things that were associated to those characters. Yeah. Because there were things where Sam and her were talking and I just disregarded them because I'm I, like, got, I, don't I care. got this whole sense that there was a whole thing going on between them. That at one point I thought they were going to turn on you. He was yeah. sick. Like th- there was, yeah. there was so much that they hinted at. You right. know, this is like watching a movie where you feel like any of a hundred things should be happening, and instead, it it just takes the safe road and goes to a very sort of like what ending? Like, well, here's here. This again is you know because there are parts where you can overhear people talking, right? So if there was a thing where you had to make a decision, I might say, yeah, let's replay it, but let's just stand near them and see what they're saying because maybe there is stuff. I don't mind that, that it doesn't hit you in the head with it if it's environmental. That's an interesting way to do it if it actually matters. The problem is it's clear it doesn't matter. There's a single no, and, ending. And the worst part is that the game looks great. It looks like, great and it plays great. It's great. It's sunny. It works. It, you yes. know, Joe and I were never able to fall through the world. We tried. That's true. We did. Um. <laughs> Amazingly, we could not. Could not. But yeah, all that, and yet, you know, the story once again is the big letdown. Yeah. And we even like the characters. Like that's the thing is that the, the the characters that were most annoying grew on us, which they did nothing um, with in most parts, or just killed yeah. off. We liked the characters we were playing. Like they had enough personality, and uh, you know what? There was a point in the game where we both said at different points that we would play this game again as different characters just to see how they interacted with people. Yeah. So you see, they had everything going for them, and then they were just like, you know, yeah, we're we're, we're going to give you part of a game. Yeah. I feel like I paid full price for half a game. Uh you paid full price for a quarter of a game. 
Oh, you're saying quarter. Okay. Yeah. Well, even worse. Yeah. You're angrier than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and now Joe and I are left in the inevitable position we often find ourselves in. The fuck are we going to play next? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I keep saying I sent you a video. Baldur's Gate 3 sounds like it is another wasteland type. Uh, yeah, and, and a bit of a learning people, curve to it, though. The people who made Wasteland were bought by Microsoft, so their yeah, next so game is going to be on Xbox yeah. only. Do you yeah. know what my wife said to me when I told her that? Yeah. Like, I, I love her kind of directness. She goes, so when are you buying an Xbox? And I was uh, like, no, oh, God. No, I was like, no. no. I was like, no. we don't need a whole other console. I stand by the no. whole, I don't want two consoles. No, she I, bought me I, I completely was, agree. Remember when she bought me an Xbox and I made her return it? Yeah, no, I agree. I am not. I don't care. I know it's Fallout's going to be on there too. Only there's no more Fallout now because Fallout's part of Bethesda. And that's no. Yes, They're Fallout's all, done. All, only on Xbox. Only on Xbox or the computer. Oh, so I'll that. play it on. P- yeah, I don't, don't start me. It'll be it'll be two more hours. So, but I am not buying. <laughs> I am not buying a oh, fucking man. Xbox. No that, chance. And, and, and listen, listen. It's not that I think xboxes are inferior let me just in my opinion it's that i have a ps5 i bought a ps5 i don't it's the same way that like i i I don't need two cars i have a car that does everything i need to do i don't need two consoles you know and when they do these exclusive they're basically just doing it to 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 be like haha you have a ps5 yeah and i don't excuse that on sony's side either i don't think it's right that there's no god of war on xbox or spider-man i think that's stupid it's fucking stupid yeah they're basically why you would do that i don't understand it's it does not you could make more money by having two platforms it's fucking stupid and I, I'm not saying that either to say Xbox is inferior. I am saying their controller is. That thing's a piece of shit. I don't know how people can hold that in their fucking hands and not develop carpal tunnel it is, in 50 it is, fucking minutes. It is pretty fat. I'll give you that. It's fucking awful. I don't understand. <laughs> it's fine. I guess my hands are weird because I guess I like them to be comfortable and not feel like I'm trying to... Whatever. It doesn't matter. Like whatever you like. But there's no chance of getting an Xbox. So I'll play Fallout no, on no, the PC. We, I'll play yeah. Wasteland on the PC maybe because I'm replaying that now by myself and I'm having a great time because I'm still doing things differently somehow. We may replay that again because I, I, I've found new things still in that game and I thought I we kind of covered most of it with different characters. You're doing different things. So it's fine, but fuck that Island 2. Don't buy it for full <laughs> price. Buy it when it's dirt cheap or maybe it's on Game Pass for free. Then you'll have a good time with it. Just don't expect it to have a story. As long as you don't expect a story out of it, you'll be fine. So, speaking of the opposite, (laughs) I have finished the fourth film in the Tetralogy, the Apocalypse Tetralogy. I watched Gaga, Glory to the Heroes from 1986. And if you remember, I had said to you, Mm -hmm. I am fairly confident because of the short span of when these movies were made that the quality level will be consistent throughout. Yeah. Oh, no. No, no. And that was true, although there was one... Very different thing about this movie, which I'll get to. But the but as far as is it as good as the others? Absolutely. This is, I can say with complete confidence is the tightest four film set from any person I've ever watched. I don't know of any other four films from the same director that are this good consistently because nobody else has made four films that are this consistently good. Everybody, there's been trilogies, Indiana yeah. Jones, you know, other movies, uh, Star Wars. But when you hit number four. Usually it goes in the toilet or it's just not as good. Not so here. So Gaga, Glory to the Heroes, the basic setup is, and I read this a little bit in the last show or the one before. So we start off and we are on what we are told. And man, there's something so interesting about these movies at this point that I don't, I want to read about, because there is some on the set that I have, there is some document, documentary material. uh, There is some, background but i haven't read any of that yet i don't know this for sure but and i'm going to get to this aspect in a minute too but let me just get the synopsis done we start off on a prison spaceship a i believe they call it an inter no what they call it a space penitentiary cruiser and it, <laughs> it is a spaceship full of prisoners okay. and we we meet one whose name is scope and they basically are they tell them they pull them out of the the gen pop and they strip him down. They put him into a raggedy spacesuit and give him a space helmet that doesn't even work. And they say, but you better hope you land on a planet that has air. Otherwise, it's going to be a very short stint. And they make him smile and they take a picture of him. And they say, do you want us to send this photo to your family? 
And he says, no. And then they drag him out in front of all the other prisoners. And the warden says, you have all broken the law of society. Oh, I'm sorry. There was, this is important. I forgot this one. (laughs) I didn't get too far. I forgot. There's an opening crawl that says that life on earth is so idyllic that nobody wants to go into space because why take a risk? They're happy on earth and everything is fine. So there's no more space exploration. And so the only way that there can be any space exploration is to make prisoners. Oh, go. make prisoners do it. Okay. Right. Then we cut to the intergalactic cruiser. And so they drag him out and the warden of the spaceship says you have broken the law, but society in its infinite mercy is allowing you to regain your honor by allowing you to go out and be a heroic space astronaut. And so we will send you out. Here is one of your own who is very happy to be doing this. And they, he's just like standing there dead eyed. But they're like, look how thrilled he is. He's going to go out <laughs> and he will celebrate and spread the, the glory of the human race and earth. And if he is able to survive oh, a man. month, then he yeah. will come back and he will regain his his honorable place among society. And da-da-da. so they, da-da-da, they shove him. <laughs> up, they bring him into a room and they're like, OK, here's what it is. He's like the, the main guard says you have to plant this flag on the surface of the planet. They say, whatever else you do, make sure you plant this. And if you survive for a month, then you get back in the capsule and it'll bring you back here. And then they take him and they shove him into this capsule. And the capsule powers up and there's a computer, an onboard computer that's kind of like a mother from like yeah. Alien. And it says, okay, select from one of four personalities. And the first three are basically the warden, the guard, and I think the prison chaplain. And then the fourth one is a woman. And so he says, oh, I'll take number four. And the, the computer says, oh, just like everybody else, you picked number four. We thought maybe you'd be more original. But that's fine. Okay, here we go. And it takes off. And it lands. Well, and he, to be fair, to be fair, if you're a, a male in a, in a I, space prison. I know. I know. Which of those are you going to pick? I, I I'd rather have a female, a soothing female voice yeah, than no, you I, know, the I, prison warden or the guard. Come on. It's just funny because it just insults him right away. Because this whole movie is just it's just a series of this guy getting fucked with. So he lands on the planet and he gets out and he's wearing the space helmet. And immediately a car, a normal Earth car, which looks like, you know, a Buick or something, pulls up and a human being gets out, a normal guy, and runs up to him and opens the helmet and says, oh, no, you can breathe. And he says, well, where am I? And he says, oh, you're on Australia dash four, five, eight. And he's just this very. He's very over enthusiastic and he's like, I'm here how, to do whatever. How did, the, how did the humans get there if these humans are exploring? Well, we're we're gonna get to some oh, of the okay. stuff. Sorry. That, All yeah. right, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so I'm just I'm taking you through the story because uh, you know, we'll get to that and then, then we get into the interpretation part, which is always the fun part with these movies. So this guy is very over enthusiastic and he's like, Oh, we've we've got you some great accommodations, and you know, if you want women or food or wine or anything, you are a hero, you are celebrated, and and we're so happy you're here. And, uh, you know, let me bring you to here. And he's just, he's suffocatingly friendly. And they get in the car and there's a girl in the car and he's like, here is your first woman. And, uh, and her name is once, uh, O N C E. And, and he says, she's all yours. You could do whatever you want to her anal, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, he's like, do whatever you want. There's no perversion here. You can do anything you want. You are a glorified hero and we are happy to have you. Like this is his over through the whole movie. This guy is like this. So they're driving along. And, and he's like, all right, um, you know, do, do you, I'm going to show you to your hotel room and then, then, you know, then we can come back out and, and, uh, and you can get the girl and you can do whatever you want to her. So they go into the hotel or they go into a bar, I think first before the hotel. And he's like, okay, here you can have drinks or whatever you want. And now I'm going to take you to a hotel room and they go out and they get in the car and they're driving along and he's looking at the girl and the girl's kind of looking at him and she's half asleep and they get to the hotel room and he brings her in, uh, brings him in. And he sh- shows her, you know, he g- brings her to the room and he's like, OK, uh, the woman there is like, oh, welcome, hero. We're so happy to have you. She's like, OK, here's three keys. Pick the left or right one. And he says, well, why can't I pick the middle one? And she says, oh, you're just being funny. Pick the left or right one here. You can have the right one. There's something with the middle, which I have a kind of idea about. But we'll get to that because there's a, an ongoing joke throughout the movie about the middle one which I'll get to when they get to it. But there's the, something like about the, the middle. Like the middle road or something like that? Like the middle choice whenever there is one. Because later when they get to the impaling stakes, he asks about the middle one. and they Oh, laugh at I him love and say, it, You're the impaling a... stakes. I yeah, the anal, uh, the rectal piercing stakes specifically. But we'll get to that. So 
He's like, okay, I'll take the one on the right. And he goes in and the room's a fucking dump. And they're like, isn't it beautiful? You know, we only the best for the heroes here. And everything is just a dump. Everything's run down. It's all, you know, it looks like it's falling apart, but they're acting like everything is great. They're like, yep, you know, you know, we're very happy here and we're so happy to have you and you get to enjoy our wonderful society and we're all just delighted that you're here. And it's this very strange, are they aware is this a put on like there's immediately there's all this. What is going on here? Is this is this a planet where they think this is a good life type of thing or is, you know, whatever. So then he goes back out to the car and the girl's gone and he says, where's the girl? And he said and the guy says, oh, there's a curfew. Underage women have to go home, you know, at night. They can't be out. So they so basically you're meant to think that she's un, that she I don't know what underage counts for. I don't know what. Polish she age was, yeah. stuff is. She was young. Yep, got it. Yeah. Right. And she looked young, but she didn't look that young. She looked to me to be in her 20s, which I looked it up and the actress was 24. So I'm like, okay, that's what she looked like to me. But again, I have a theory on that that'll come later. So then he's like, oh, okay. And he's like, well, how do I find out where she lives? He's like, oh, don't worry about that. There, there are whores aplenty here for you. We can, get, we can get you women. Don't worry about it. He's like, yeah, but I want, I liked her. He's like, okay, well, you, you're going to have to go and talk to, like, I guess, the planet, p- planetary pimp or whatever for the area. He's like, well, Al is the boss. So if you want to talk to him, go talk to Al. So he goes and he finds Al and, you know, he's like, oh, where's the girl? And Al's like, oh, there's plenty of women. Don't worry about it. You know, I'll, I'll find her for you. And he goes back out. And now there's a different woman in his car, an older woman. And, you know, she's like, hey, you want to fuck me in the ass? You want to fuck me in the face? What do you want to do? Like, <laughs> like, literally, she's throwing him, herself at him. She's like, heroes are allowed to do whatever they want. I'm here. We could do it in the car. We could do it somewhere else. And he's like, uh, yeah, I don't. Do you want to do it in a plane? Would you like to do it in a train? <laughs> right, exactly. And uh, and then eventually he basically kicks her out of the car and she gets all pissed off. And she's like, oh, all you, all you heroes want is young pussy. And, you know, you think that she's so much better. She doesn't know what she's doing. Fuck you. And she's just going on this rant. <laughs> <laughs> and so Jesus. and then uh, it's uh, it's it's fucking mania <laughs> it's like it's lunatic shit i mean the whole movie uh. is just this most bizarre kind of like bizarro world thing yeah so then so then he takes him the the guy the what is the guy's name i don't remember what the the enthusiastic guy so i'll just call him uh you know uh, mr chauffeur mr chauffeur takes him to a place and says okay uh, we have some clothes for you to wear in your locker. Your locker's number is 451, which I don't know if that's supposed to be a Fahrenheit 451 reference or what. Hard to say. Uh, but with these movies, it probably is. So he goes in and he opens up 451 in this locker room that looks like it's left over from a bomb that went off. Like it just look everything is decrepit yeah. and dusty and murky and dingy. Like it's just a fucking it's a wreck. And he goes in, he opens it up, and it's this awful what looks like a. 1960s Vegas like male like impersonator outfit with all glitter and shit and he just looks at it and he's disgusted and he puts it away and he sees the locker next to it is open and it's got like a jacket and some normal shoes so he takes that stuff and then he happens to see that locker 450 like the door is swinging a little bit so he opens it and immediately an arm flies out and starts choking him and and he's like wrestling with it and then the arm just comes off and there's half of a torso in the in the locker and then he throws the arm down. The arm is kind of moving a little bit while it's, while it's ripped off. And I don't know what the fuck that was supposed to be, but it happens. So then he leaves. And I, I honestly, I'm like, what the fuck is this? And it's never explained. So I don't even know what it was supposed to be. I'm sure there's a metaphor for it that I'm not getting because I didn't live in Poland <laughs> during communism. That's fine. That, I, it doesn't matter because this is the most probably Lynchian of all of them with just weird shit happening. So then... He goes and he finds out where once lives and he gets her and and he says um, and she's like, well, do you want to do it in the car? And he's like, no, I don't really want to do it in the car. Why do you like having sex in the car? And she's like, no, I hate having sex in the car because there's all these knobs. But most of the heroes who show up, they just want to do it right away. They're not thinking Uh-oh. about you know what Uh-oh. I care about. Right. So he's all like, all right. Heroes. Well, he, well, because he's certainly not the first one. No, no. Th- this yeah. these are. This is not new. This has happened over and over uh, because they talk about the fact that, well, if you survive, nobody ever has. But if you do, then you can get back on the ship and go. So he says, all right, well, where do you want to go? And she says, we can go back to my place. And he's like, "Okay, that's fine. She's like, I don't usually take guys back to my place, but I like you because you seem to actually be a normal person. He's like, "Okay, well, are you hungry? And she's like, sure. And he says, well, where can I get food? And she's like, "Okay, well, there's a restaurant right there. So he stops and he gets out. 
and he goes to go in. And this is the next day, so I should have pointed out. So he goes into this dingy so room. They, they, they've now had sex, is what you're saying. No, no, they haven't had sex yet. No, no, no. There's a big thing around that. I'll get to that. So no. Okay. So now he, he finds her the next day because now it's during the daytime. And apparently, even though it's never daytime, we never see daylight in this movie at all. It's always night. So the next time he sees her, though, it's the next day. Yeah. Or whatever, because if it's an alien planet, then I guess maybe they just don't have a lot of daylight. Yeah. Who knows? Or whatever, yeah. So he goes in, and, she's, and he says, well, why don't you come with me? And she's like, no, I can't go in there because, you know, they, they, if they see me, it's getting close to curfew, and they might, you know, it might be a problem. He's like, okay, fine, what do you want? And, he, and she says, get me, uh, she's like, just get me a simple ble- bread roll, like just a piece of bread. And he's like, no, I can get you more than that. I have money. They gave me money because they gave him all this money. And she's like, no, I'll just have a bread roll. And he's like, well, it says they have hot dogs. Do you want some hot dogs? Uh, okay. So he goes in, and he says, can I have four hot dogs? And the guy brings him hot dogs, except that the meat is fingers. And he's like, what the hell is this? And he's like, what? These are good hot dogs. But they're hot dog buns with fingers in them. Like the same type of, like, they look like dead fingers. And he gets disgusted, and he leaves. And he goes back out to the car and says, yeah, they didn't have anything. And so so then they drive, and what? Oh, and then they don't have sex that time, I don't think. I think... um, (laughs) I think that he just has to bring her back and, and then the guy comes and gets him again. And the guy's like, hey, I want to show you uh, the stage where your execution will be held. It's great. We've set it up for you. We're practicing. It's going to be wonderful. So he brings him. And the whole time, this guy just has this like condemned to death look about him. And he's just bewildered. Well, you're kind of sitting like, there like, wait a minute. Condemned to what? Like, yeah, what? yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, uh, so he brings him to the stage and he's like, all right. He's like, uh, here's the impaling st- sticks or the impaling spears. He's like, pick one left or right. And he's like, well, what if I want the middle one? He's like, oh, you're such a joker. Nobody picks the middle one. Pick left or right. And he's like, uh, I'm not going to pick one. And they keep asking him to sign things. That's another thing that keeps happening throughout. It. They're like, OK, are these accommodations good? Please sign here. And there's an interesting detail that I picked up on. And this, there's so many little things where I'm like, OK. And this is one so, of the wait, major. Wait, wait. Yeah. How is he expected to survive this if they're going to kill him? Well, we're going to we're going to get okay. to what because because up until this, you don't really understand why he's going to be executed or what it looks like. You're just being told it's yeah, going to happen. Like, yeah. Very confused. Right. OK. So he says, you know, um, uh, when, when when we execute you, you know, we're going to we're going to impale you by your ass on these spears and we'll broadcast it. And it's going to be a wonderful spectacle. It's great for the entire uh, world to be able to see this. And you're doing us such a great honor by being executed for us. All this type of shit. Right. And yeah. so there's a point where uh, he's talking to. I don't remember if the, the person's a lawyer or whatever, but uh, and somebody actually put the quote. So I'm going to read it because it. I'd like to make sh- some of this stuff. I like to get verbatim so that you can hear exactly what it is. And I wish if this was in English, it's not even dubbed as far as I know, I would have pulled sound clips, but unfortunately it's all dubbed. So it's just been in Polish and you wouldn't understand it. So here's the quote. <laughs> this is, this is talking to the guy. So this is either the officer or the lawyer quote. Just think you commit a nightmarish crime. Best if you do it in broad daylight when a crowd is watching mass media are on the scene and you realize the great p- benefits the community derives from witnessing the exemplary punishment of something so hideous, how rare and uplifting it is to watch a crime which is punished. And then he says, could I not be punished for nothing just like that? And then the guy says, I know what you mean. I am also sensitive. I abhor blood and violence. Of course, we could do it without a crime, but punishment without a crime? It's immoral, don't you think? I trust that you can rouse yourself to some jolly good crime. You know, something spontaneous with panache. Blood, raw flesh, entrails out. This is what gets people high. Something which is stomach turning. Sentiment sentimentalism appeals to villains. Will you do it? And then they want him to sign a paper. And this is a consistent thing throughout this where they're saying fucked up things to him as if they're good things. And then they want him to sign a paper saying he approves of them. So this is a consistent thing throughout the movie. So he reunites with once again. Right. And now he says, uh, oh, well, I'm sorry. He finds where she lives. So he gets her address, goes there and she's there. And, you know, he says, um, and so they start to have sex. They're just getting to the point where they're going to, at which point the windows break and fucking officers run in and they're like, you, you're raping a minor. We need to get evidence. So they rip her shirt off 
and they basically punch her, throw her on him, who they've knocked out. And they're like, all right, take pictures so that we have incriminating evidence. And they've got like a DA there or an inspector. And he's like, is that enough evidence? He's like, eh, no, we need to see more of her ass or something like that. And they're like, okay. So they pull her dress up and then push her on him and like, take a picture. And it's like, is that enough? And he's like, yes, that's enough. And so he starts to fight back. And like they start throwing him around and they knock his ass out again. And now they're like, okay, now we have the crime, the crime of statutory rape. And they bring him in and they're like, you will now be executed for the crime of statutory rape. Right? So they're like, okay, the execution is set for, I don't know, two days from now, whatever it was. And so then they just set him free because, you know, they, they expect him to show up. Like he's going to get pulled to this thing. And in the hotel where he stays, he had run into a family that was staying there that they were like, oh, come eat with us. Heroes should eat with us. We, you know, we'd love to share our food with you and everything. So he goes in and, and they have a daughter and the daughter is blind. And he says, uh, what, what's wrong with your daughter? And they had said to him that she had cataracts. And he said, well, cataracts are easy to fix. You just get a surgery. And he's like, yeah. The dad's like, but we just don't have enough money. Because again, this everybody's living in squalor. Like it, it's yeah. fucking poverty planet. But they act like they're having these great lives. And so they're like, yeah, we'd love to, but we don't have enough money. And, he's, and so... He remembers that when he sees them at one point after he's scheduled to be executed and he goes, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just go rob a bank because they're going to execute me anyway. So there, and while he was there at one point, you look out, he, he looks out a window and he sees another person who's from the prison ship. And this guy is acting the way they want them to act where he's just basically, you know, he's got women all over him and he's just acting like an asshole and he's just breaking shit and acting like somebody who, you know, you would want to be executed. So it's the polar opposite of scope. So they're showing you the behavior that they're trying to encourage that somebody else is doing. That's the idea is that's how they want him to act. But instead he's trying to just be quiet and stay to himself and try to figure out a way to survive. But this guy isn't. So he goes to rob the bank and he walks in and he's got a gun because they came to him. Uh, the chauffeur guy came to him at one point and said, OK, uh, if you want to murder some people, I've got some stuff for you. Here's a knife. Here's a machete. Here's a gun. He's like, you know, whatever you want to do, shoot up a place, you know, kill a bunch of women and children, whatever. The bigger, the bloodier, the better. Right. Like a game show. And so he kept all that stuff. And so he walks in with the gun and he shoots up in the air and says, yeah, it's a robbery. Give me all your money. And so they're putting money into a bag for him. And as he's doing that. The other guy walks in with a submachine gun and just kills everybody. Just fucking shoots everyone dead in the place. And he's horrified because he just wanted to scare them and take the money. And this guy comes in and guns them all down, at which point he fucking shoots him. He shoots him in the head. He shoots the other guy in the head for being a fucking asshole. And so he leaves and immediately... The cops roll up, and he gets in the car and he's driving and the cops and the chauffeur roll up and they're like, this is perfect. This is perfect. A bunch of people dead. You killed the guy and took his money. Oh, what a wonderful crime. This is excellent. This is exactly what he wanted, what we wanted. And so he manages to lose them. He goes back to the hotel, walks in, throws the one bag of money to the family and says, give your kid the cataract surgery that she needs. And they're going crazy because they've never seen this much money. And he leaves and then he goes and he finds the pimp and he says, I want, uh, I want you to get, give me once I want her. And, he, and the guy's like, well, you're going to have to pay for it. And he's like, well, I've got the money for it. And he's like, all right, well then I'll meet you. I want two bags of money, which now he only has one. He's like, I want two bags of money and you can have it. And he's like, okay, meet me here. I'll bring the money. So they set up the meet. The guy shows up with the girl. He shows up with the one bag of money. And he's like, that's not enough. And he's like, well, it's that or I'm going to kill you. So I think you should take the money and get the fuck out of here. And so he gives the pimp the one thing. He takes the girl and they start to run. They're in the car and they're going, right? And so they get to the ship because the ship is still there. So he's like, all right, get in. We're yeah, going to get out. It's, but it's, but it's, it'll only leave after a certain period, right? Yeah. So they get in yeah. and the computer says, <laughs> did you plant the flag? And he says, yes. Now I want to leave. And they're like, and the computer says, well, you can't leave yet. At which point she, the, the girl grabs, I don't know, a pipe or something and starts smashing different computer screens. And is like, get us the fuck off this planet. And the computer, I guess, is scared. So it's like, all right, all right, all right. Uh, we'll get you back. We'll, we'll bring you back to, to Earth. And he says, no, he says, I don't want to go back to Earth. We want to go to some planet that's far away from everyone and all of this. Just get us somewhere else. And I'm sitting here going, oh, man. 
I'm like, what's going to happen? Is the, is the fucking thing going to blow up? Is it going to be that it was all uh, that like there was, is the girl going to turn on him? I'm like, what is this? What is going to happen? Because all the other movies. Yeah, because you're waiting, you're waiting for that ending. Yeah. Right. So then at what, hear, at what point is fantasy going to fly away? That's it. It's like, what part of this is going to be the ruse? Because all of them have had this element. So you hear the ship's engines and it takes off and the screen goes to black and then it comes up and says, and they lived happily ever, heavily, happily ever after and gave rise to a new civilization. And I went, holy shit. What? He ended it with a happy <laughs> ending. The whole setup was for me to think it was going to be a fake out. And it's a happy ending to four movies of misery. So these two of all the movies, these two, the guy and an underage prostitute, get away and start a new world together. Which I was like, fuck shit, man. This whole time I've been like, what's the fake out? And the fake out was that there's no fake out. It's fucking awesome. Well, it's basically I, he ended he ended with, hey, guess what? There is hope. Yeah, yeah. Up after fucking three and, and yeah. seven tenths of a movie of when, misery. Did this movie when did this movie come out? Did this come out 86. before the wall came down? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure it was okay. yeah, I think I think I don't know. When did the wall well actually wait a minute, now that you say that, Burr. Lynn Wall. When did the wall come down? The wall came down 89, so it was before. But you know what? When did communism end in Poland? Maybe maybe those are not connected. Communism in Poland. Um, let's see. Does it say from when? Hold on. I'm looking. 39, 50, post-Stalin. Um, 89, it says here. Oh, wait a minute. Gorbachev became the new secretary of the USSR in 85 and introduced reforms and current. Oh, so maybe this was a response to the new, maybe that was it. Maybe there was the hope because Gorbachev became, um, the general secretary the year before. Maybe that is it. That could be. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, you know, spitballing here. Now <laughs> here's the interesting part of this thing. Yeah. Because this is for me. And I, like I said, I have not read or seen anything of, of the intent, but, there's a couple of interesting things in this that make me wonder if any of it is to be believed outside of the ending and even the ending, depending on how you look at it might. I, well, the ending doesn't tell, doesn't show you as the other movies did that there's anything to suggest that it's not true, that they didn't actually lift off and go somewhere else. Okay. But here's a thing that I noticed. And again, this could simply be because these are low budget films or it could okay. be intentional. You see him sign the doc. He has to sign a document on the space cruiser before he gets put into the capsule. And okay. he uses a pencil that's broken in a very specific way. Like there's this big jutting fragment of it that it's very hard to miss. Like you see it. That same pencil is used every time he signs anything anywhere. It's the same pencil. The place is named Australia 458. There's a human car. There's human beings. Things are in English. They have Coca-Cola. Did he actually go to Earth? Is the whole thing about the idyllic Earth a lie? Is it actually oh, a dystopia? Hold on. And is it actually, is it, is it, are they told it's idyllic? But the only reason that the people there think it's idyllic is because they see prisoners. Yes. Being punished. Get executed. If, if the whole idea is that it's the, it's the, what do you call it? The, not the facade, the, the, the fantasy of justice makes people feel like they're living in an ideal culture. Correct. I don't know because that pencil, I, I mean, that could be because the budget was low, but you can't, I can't imagine they couldn't find more than one pencil. Someone had to note. I noticed it. I mean, it's the same pencil. It, it feels like the director does everything on purpose. Well, so. that's what I'm saying. So, and the idea that they keep saying how great the planet is when it's a fucking shithole. I mean, it's, it's miserable and they keep telling him it's great. So I think that's maybe what the actual idea is, is that Earth is actually a dump and that the only reason they view it as being perfect is because they are shown these prisoners who do depraved things. Yeah. And so kind of like how people feel better by seeing someone in a worse position than they are. Yeah, yeah. It makes, it makes you reduce your own miseries. Like my yes. problems are nothing compared to that person's. I don't know. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be because it just seems odd because there's all these little things. And even the thing with the middle pole, because at the site of the crucifixion of Jesus, weren't there three crucifixions? Wasn't there three yes. crosses? Yeah, there, there was him and then there was two murderers. 
Yeah. So yeah. it's it's and, and again, this is a martyrdom, really. It's it's dying for the benefit of others, dying for the sins of others. He is being punished and, sh- you know, showing others that, you know, punishment of sins. Like it's all this shit where I'm like, I, I don't know if this is I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at here. But the fact that I'm looking at it three different ways is what makes it good. Like I, I'm thinking about these movies and they're all great. So this, as I said, I've never seen a four film set like this where the, it's almost like, remember when I talked about that um, dev series and the reason I thought it was so good is because the guy did every single episode. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was very focused on it. He yeah. did the whole thing top to bottom. So he was in charge. So the vision was consistent throughout that's what these movies are. They're all wildly different. And yet you have no doubt these are made by the same mind with the same kind of, now he didn't write all of them, but that, I don't think that matters that much. In fact, let me see, is it the same writer for all of them? You know, that's the one thing I didn't look at. Um, is it, is it the same person who write? Cause I imagine it had to be a collaborative thing. Uh, let's see the writer of this one. Oh no, he did write Gaga glory to the hero. So he did write this one. I think he didn't write, he didn't write one of them. Let's see. Uh, writer. Let me find his writer thing. He wrote. He wrote the end of civilization. Oh no! You know what? He wrote. He did the screenplay for Gollum, but that was based on an existing thing. So I don't think that's that. He was adapting the Gollum myth. So he did write all of these. Yeah, that makes fucking sense. I'm telling you, these movies are unbelievable. I fucking love that I bought this set. I. I. This is. The most exciting cinematic journey I've had in a while in terms of every fucking movie works and they all work differently and they all have depth to them. They're beautiful looking with with these real. I mean, it's 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 very hard to quantify why I adore these movies so much. I, I don't know that I can properly ever explain it. There's something about them that is so unique among stuff that I've watched that and to find them randomly and to have every one of them be really wonderful in very it, different it, ways. It restores your hope for there be, still being some level of hope and art in the world, right? God, that, I, you, that you that you found these and you're yeah. like, how old am I? And I just discovered these? Holy shit. And then shit. I bought them randomly yeah. based on the fact that the cover art was neat and the description sounded kind of cool. But without any awareness, I really yeah, expected yeah. these to be B-movie like, uh, what do they call it? Uh, schlock type stuff. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. you know, like, you know, low budget Mad Max ripoffs or whatever. And instead they're thoughtful and they're metaphorical and they've got this beautiful imagery in them using very obviously restrained budgets. And most of the cast is the same throughout the movies. I recognize people now that I saw in the movies as it went on. Like the guy who's the main actor in Gollum is in every single one of the woman who was in Gollum is out in three out of four. There's all these people that show up again and again and again. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where he was using the same people, probably people he knew to be able to try to do as much as he could. And they're really wonderful movies that I don't think most people have ever heard of. I don't even know if people who are, you know, art house uh, <laughs> freaks know about it. Okay. Cause I've read a lot of people who've said the same thing as me. It's like, holy shit. I never knew about these movies. These are fucking great. So the only bad thing about them is that this is apparently the only way you can watch them. I don't think they're streaming anywhere. So I don't even know if you can buy them like digitally. I don't, I don't think you can. Uh, Let me see. Cause I looked at like this one. I said, there's a a website that tells you where you can stream things. Now, almost all of them are on YouTube, but the ones I've looked at the quality, I mean, it doesn't really matter. If it's the only way you can watch them, you should watch them. So let let me, well, you bought them. They are buyable. Well, right. But, Listen, I would watch watch the YouTube version. Get a sense of how you feel about that's it. That's what I was going to say. Or don't buy it. You know? I wouldn't tell. I would. I never tell people to buy four movies sight unseen. I did it because I'm an idiot. But once in a while, the bet pays off. So the, you know what they say: fortune favors the bold. Yeah, but like I said, you know, but not everybody has the ability to just buy a four disc set and not regret it if they hate the movie. So yes, watch it <laughs> on YouTube. And and if you like one you're going to probably like them all because they're all that type of, they're all that type of film. Though I would honestly say the one I would tell somebody to start with would be war of the world's next century. Watch that one. I think out of all of them, that is probably the middle two are my favorites. I think that one and, uh, Obi Oba, the end of civilization. I think those are the highlights, which is not to say I didn't enjoy the shit out of Gollum or this one. 
I did. But those middle two, I think in particular with the second one, man, that one is so interesting because there's all these little visual things that when you pick up on them, they do make you start to think, okay, what am I meant? What is actually happening here? You know, the whole thing about, are they Martians or did this government take children and spray paint them silver, not caring about the fact that they would be bludgeoned to death when people turned on them just so that they could have control of their populace. Keeping in mind, it was made by a Polish filmmaker who wasn't allowed to make the movies he wanted to because of government censorship under communist rule. You start yeah, to see things in here. I'm going to add something kind of funny to this. Yeah, go. So remember I told you the, the Klimt paintings were, uh, were lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so apparently I, would, I, just, the, I still had the Klimt page open. This, yeah. and this thing popped up, and you were talking about you know, the, the communism. And, and, and uh, apparently the, those three paintings... Were they were supposed to be allegorical depictions of medicine, jurisprudence, and philosophy for the University of Vienna's Great Hall. The yeah. university rejected them in 1907 on the grounds of pornography and perverted excess. Oh, right. Yeah. Now hold on, this is the part that made me think about it. Yeah. They passed into the hands of private collectors and were then destroyed by SS officers during World War II. Oh, so yeah. they weren't lost. They were destroyed specifically by the SS. Sure. For decades, they survived only in black and white photos. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. I do like, in that respect, that the there has been some level of color restored to them because, sure. in a way, it's like a big fuck you to the SS. I like that. Yeah. And I like that this guy, this filmmaker, he's trying to make these movies of commentary and hope even in a time where that could have got him killed oh absolutely yeah you yeah. know so it's pretty amazing that he made these movies i i agree i i, I really th these movies have been a some of the most joyous watching of movies i've had in a long time because they're they're just they could be made today. Like I could see somebody making these in a, in a low budget way now and even maybe making the same commentary, but it's just something where it's, it's not only the quality of the movies and what they're discussing and making you think about, yeah. but it's coupled with the fact that I'm sure I've never heard of this person or any of these movies, or even if I had, it must've been in some very small way where I never really noticed them. And Again, to just randomly buy them, expecting them to be like almost it's, like Cynthia Rothrock, Italian Mad Max ripoff, like action films and to have them be deeply thoughtful. You know what? You know. It's like it's like the universe moved things around to make sure you found them. Yeah. 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 I had a, I had a weird moment like that today. I thought of you. My wife and I were trying to buy plates because we've had the same plates for like a decade sure. that are pretty fucked up. Um, and our kids are old enough now that we can like kind of get nicer plates. And we were at the store and she was looking at flowery, you know, intricate flowery looking mm -hmm. plates. They were cool. And I said, God, you know what we really need? We need like a day of the dead fucking like plate set. That's what we really need. Ooh, yeah. Right. And I'm not fucking kidding when I say that I turned around and there was a display of day of the dead plates. Oh, that's great. And I was like, holy shit. Because this is that whole suddenly it was there. Yeah. Like, yeah. did you know? Did I know? Yeah. Synchronous. Did I know it was there? Did, was it put there? Did the universe move things around? Did you see a reflection in a package? Of, yeah. of did I see a reflection really in the glass? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. I, you know, did, was there, did something happen that I subconsciously knew they were there? But yeah, sometimes it's like uh, it's like the universe just wanted you to have something. Those movies, yeah. it was time for you to see those movies. Yeah, it was. You it know? was just funny the it's, way that because I yeah. bought the I How bought three. How haphazard it was! Yeah. It was haphazard, and I bought it yeah. with a Cynthia Rothrock film, which was undefeatable, yep. which I knew what that yep. was, and I bought it with yep. a Blade in the Dark, which is a Jalo film. It's an Italian yeah. slasher. So it's yeah. not even like I was buying Apocalypse films. No, it no, was, it just happened. Yeah, it was the cover art. I really yeah, it just happened. The cover. I was like, and, "Whoa!" And, that's and neat. it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. 
So, yeah. <laughs> and and shockingly, and this is the other unusual part, because again, I've never watched four movies by the same person and thought they were all excellent. Have you ever watched four movies? In, in a row? Not, not, well, no, four movies by the same that are, because they aren't necessarily, it's not like they're directly related. They're not the same character in every movie. So it's not like Indiana Jones. No, but yeah, yeah. But, you know, in other words, four movies that are similar themes. I mean, I could, I could name four Tony Scott movies that are great, but they're all very different. Actually, you know what? Tony Scott's a good example, because most of his movies were about crime, right? Like they're, Or they were crime-related or something like that. And I would say that, like... No, not in the same climate. I mean, that's the other thing. Too. That, it's, that's it's what I mean. Made, it's it's, it's he made four movies in communist Poland. Right. Like this. That are like this. Yeah. So, yes, I can, and, there yeah. are directors who have made more than four good movies. That's not my point. You know, but four movies like, listen, that are uh, like this. Yeah, because it's like making Brazil. some. Well, you know what? Terry Gilliam's a great example. Because Terry Gilliam has made a lot of movies that are kind of in that vein. Right? But, like, Brazil is very good. You know? Uh, but he made that movie, you know... In the U.S., you know, he he didn't have the restrictions of a communist government. You know, well, it's, also, it, like Time Bandits in Brazil aren't really related movies. No, not really. No. That's You're what right, I mean about these. Respect, are, these yeah. are. It's not to say that no directors ever made four good movies. That's not what I'm saying. Is to to, yeah. to have and, somebody and who the, makes in a short the, span movies that feel very of a piece yeah. in a row one after another and have four of them all be excellent right in a row. That's unusual. Yeah, that that's four good albums in a row. Yeah. Which yeah. Led Zeppelin did that. So, yeah, yeah, Led Zeppelin is the musical equivalent <laughs> of Peter Zulkin. So, there is that. But like I said, you know, watch them on YouTube. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's the best way to do it. Is, is watch War of the Worlds next century. Because the order doesn't matter. That's the nice part about them not being related is you don't have to worry about the order. You know what? You know what, though? I think the order does matter. I do. Because your last movie that you watched to his was hopeful. Well, I was going to say the only one I would say to watch last is this one. Watch this one last. But if you want a sense of it, either of the first two. So, yeah, you can you can watch them in a row because all, all four of them, I, uh, I believe, are on. I know for sure the first three are on YouTube with subtitles. Gollum uh, is a, I, I like Gollum. Don't get me wrong. It's just that actually, you know what? You're right. It does matter because Gollum is so small scale. And then War of the Worlds does feel like a big upgrade like that. Yeah. That maybe in the lessons of Gollum uh, let him figure out what he could do on a grander. Man, that that might be the best one. War of the Worlds Next Century might be the best one. Because, man, that speech about the media and people is so good. And it's so fucking persistently relevant. I mean, I read it. I read it on that show. I wish I had a good English reading of that. Because I would play that as an intro. It's so good about... You know, you pretend you don't like raped, but you rape, but you like to see others rape, like shit like that. I was like, holy shit, man, this guy was, he was talking about real shit. He was just putting it on, you know, another, well, with Martians. So that, that is, it is wonderful in that way. So uh, I, I thought these movies were great. Um, I hope I stumble upon another set like this. I truly do because, well, holy it shit. is hope. There's no, hope. there, there is. There is, and I, I had talked. To the, the the I hope that maybe somebody is working on a really good version of On the Silver Globe, which is also a Polish filmmaker, and the same time, and that was partially destroyed by censors. That one was actually partially destroyed, kind of a Klimt type of thing, where he had to complete some of the movie by just putting voiceover lines on footage of horses, because he he knew the scenes <laughs> were important, but he didn't have them because they destroyed him and he couldn't remake them and he died. So this was the only way to do it. Um, or no, maybe he wasn't dead, but he just couldn't make him anymore. But it's such a wonderful, visually inventive movie, and it's, it's there's only a DVD version of it, which I have, but it's not it's not great. So if that comes out, I'll buy that instantly. I don't care what format it's in. If it's cleaned up, I'm buying it. So yes, there may be... So I say Vinegar Syndrome, man. I love that fucking company. They are mining good shit. I mean, they, they put out as much porno flicks as they do this stuff, but that's what's wonderful about them. <laughs> they don't, I'm, and I'm not kidding. They are putting out hardcore porno flicks alongside this stuff. So, Well, it's all it's part great. of the human experience, isn't it? It is. It is. They're my favorite uh, movie production company at the moment. They're doing great work. So, and, and listen, maybe they're using the porn that everyone's buying to fund all this and stuff. I, and and you know to. what? I'm fine with that. That's like when the actors do the big movie to fund the small movie. Same thing. So 
in summary, I am both wonderfully satisfied and a little bit sad that I have come to the end of the Tetralogy because it was hit after hit after hit, but now it's over. At least this part, this particular one is. So I don't know what I'll be reviewing for next week because I was just looking forward to each one of these when I'd watch them. I'm like, oh, this is the day I'm going to watch this one. And I'd be like, all right, close the blinds, sit back, have a glass of water, turn the fucking phone on to silent and just enjoy this shit and not think about anything else for a while. <laughs> and it never wasn't rewarding. It was always a treat. So on that note, be warned about that island. Just know what you're getting into. Um, and, the, and the tetralogy is great. So if you're in for this type of stuff, watch it on YouTube and, and enjoy. And on that note, have a wonderful weekend. We will talk to you again next week. Visit OzoneNightmare.com to subscribe to new episodes, browse through our back catalog, or to find links to support the show. Follow at OzoneNightmare on Twitter for the latest episode postings and other show information. If 280 characters just isn't enough, you can always email us, theozonenightmare at gmail.com. The opening theme for the show is provided by Heartbeat Hero. The closing theme is provided by Ogre. Please visit and support these artists using the links in the show notes for each episode.